that Cougar Run Canyon is? See that peak over there with the twin pines down to the right? It's about a, oh, half a mile or so below that. What do you got in that bedroll? Whiskey? Yeah, some. Get it up. Well, I don't mind giving you a drink. Get going. Move! Oh, oh let's go. Get away from her, boy. You ain't gonna get no tip. <laughs> Could have been the Crown Brothers. Took back to heading for Cougar Run Canyon. Six hundred miles, this better be worth it. What you gonna do if it ain't? Same as you. Turn around and go back home six hundred miles. But I ain't going home poor. Yeah, me neither. I like this kind of life. Hey, you. Do you speak English? Better than you, fella. Well, then after you, brother. Uh-uh. What's your name? Well, they call me Joe. Joe Spanish. Where you from, brother? Albuquerque. Where you from? North Platte, North Dakota. Yeah? Where you headed? Where are you headed? Meet some friends I got. Same as me. Cougar Run Canyon? Cougar Run Canyon. Well, let's go. Right, brother. But after you. Uh-uh. Forget it. Oh, it's Slick. Howdy. Howdy. I want you to go back to Oxford. That's the nearest town. There's a man there that we need. Now, don't say anything that'll give us away, and uh, don't get in a fight with him. Just bring him back in one piece. Quiet and no trouble. He's a trail boss. You shouldn't have any problems spotting him with that beat up hat of his. We'll be waiting for you. Don't feel too imposed on. I gotta get one too. You mean someone's telling you what to do? You might say that in a manner of speaking. You know, this is going to be bigger than I thought. Let's go, Spanish. Oh, uh, sorry, Joseph, not this time. Hey, what do you mean, not this time, you big cheapskate? How come? Girl, favor, you renegade. Step in here and stop talking Good so much. Good to see you, bro. Sit friend. down, sit down. Ah, you look terrible. Hmm? One of these days, you're going to feel successful enough to buy a decent hat. Oh, what an ever loving is wrong with that hat? I'm just about getting it broken right. <laughs> Gil, how have you been? Fine, fine, Bruce. What's this about you going on the wagon? Who said I... Oh, that? Nothing. How's Rowdy? Oh, that big dumb kid. What are you going to say about him except he's healthy? And Phoebe? Fine. Just fine. Off on a trip. Hey, how about that? Good. Where to? And she's got the kids with her, too. Soon she returns, we want to have you for dinner again. Thursday? As long as she doesn't hawk me about uh, having a new hat. Well, Gil, how about it? Are you uh, ready to sell to me at a huge loss? Like always, why not? Now, you know the market? You 
better believe I do. Thirty-three dollars a head, hmm? Uh, coffee? What's this? You're trying to soften me up with coffee instead of booze? Pray so, Gil. Uh, I'm offering $24 a head. Oh, at least you used to get me schlocked up with uh, good champagne before you'd start playing silly games. How about it? You are joking me, ain't you, bro? No, not joking. What is it, Broom? Really in trouble? You, uh... I have to make a low offer on your herd. And without any advance this time. Well, I guess if you wanted me to know why, you would have told me, so I won't ask. Thanks, Gil. Uh, I'm temporarily short, that's all. I see. And I can't go higher than $24. There's no other buyers, Gil. It's me or nothing. No other buyers? How come? Can't tell you. All I know is I'm the only buyer in the area at the moment. And I'm a $24 buyer. Bro, you know I'd like to help you out, but the owners back in Texas won't go for it. Just this once, Gil. You really have to have the deal on those terms, bro? Yep, I do. I, I can't go that far, but uh, I'll split the difference. $28 a head, 48 hours to exercise the option. Gil, sell me the herd oh, low. Oh, I can't, not at that price. All right, take it easy. Look, I'll, uh, I'll tell you what, I, I, can, I can forego my commission and get that back any time. 10% from $28, that, that brings it down to $25, $20 ahead. Can't you come down that extra dollar twenty? Bro. If I hold out a hundred head and sell them to the restaurants, it might make up the difference. Is that all right? That's a deal. Uh, you want some coffee now? Coffee? Are you kidding? I need a drink. Burnside, and this is my partner, Mr. Spry. Hey, we come 50 miles, want to offer you $32 a head. Oh, I am sorry about that. I'm afraid I've just sold the herd, though. You think the man you just sold to uh, would like to make a profit? Of course he would. You want him by the whole herd? Indeed we do, Mr. Favor. Where can we find him? Up the hotel. Do you take us to him? Sure, why not? Well, good. First, I want to get uh, my contracts and my saddlebags. Just take me a minute. Mr. Favor, can you come over and look at these contracts? Now empty your gun. Now you're going with us. Somebody wants to talk to you. Oh, say, maybe we'd better stop over at the hotel anyways. Um, well, if I don't pay my bill... Well, don't I'm you looking... worry about your bill. We'll pay it. Now, let's go. Dinner. Hey, uh, 
It'd be uh, Bowie Fisk, wouldn't you? How'd you know? Oh, it finally come to me. I hear a lot of times I have to kill a lot of time in the post offices. And, yeah. Partner here is probably Joe Spanish, huh? I bet you got good marks in school, Faber. The rest of the kids couldn't stand you. I was just wondering how come two such famous desperados felt the need to work together. Uh, who said we needed to, Faber? Well, if you don't, how come you're doing somebody else's dirty work? Must be an awful big man, huh? We better move out, Bowie. Let's go. Come on. carry a gun. Now, how'd we do that? Must have slipped our minds. Miss Favor, you know that carrying a loaded gun is dangerous. Pow! <laughs> so as we could get him out of town, we just let him look proper. But he couldn't harm a fly. For your favor, huh? I'm Bolt Carson. Now, him I never heard of. <laughs> you better take it easy, Favor. This one's a master with brass knuckles. He's stupid, but he fights good. Oh, well, you're supposed to be so good with a knife, huh, boy? Well, I'll fight you any time. Right now, if you want to. Why don't you go beat up on some old ladies, Bo? <laughs> now go ahead, will you? <laughs> Name's Favor, Gil Favor. Gil Favor? The trail boss? That's right. What are you doing here? You know how come you're here? No, I don't. Forrest Denver. I'm a trail boss, too. No, oh, not as big or as important a one as you are, but I make a living at it. Here, those swine came and took me right away from my herd. 
I had to leave over 700 head out there when they're a 14-year-old boy. I'm promising you I'm going to see every one of them behind bars. They're not going to get away with this. See, by any chance, have you ever seen the men before that brought you in here? No. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. Why? Hmm. Why, I said. Nothing. Favor, you're holding something back. Now, you speak up. Look, uh, first off, I would suggest that uh, you calm down, Mr. Denver. Calm down? Yeah, you know, I thought I was lucky when I found you in here. I thought that you was a man who was used to standing up for his rights. I wonder if they would have picked you up if they realized they were picking up a bus so. That's not a straight answer, Favor. Mr. Denver, do you realize that the young man who brought you in here goes by the name of Malloy Slake? I mean, that was Malloy Slate. Yeah. I thought he was doing 20 years. So did I. I let myself think I was being brought here to pay for a crossing toll. This ain't no crossing toll. Oh, that it isn't. Hey, did they search you when they brought you here? Uh, I know. Me neither. So it ain't no robbery, neither. I'm afraid you're right, Mr. Denver. Afraid I'm right? Then you think it's something worse. Mr. Denver, I don't know why we're here, but I do know that these are very dangerous men. And it seems to me that it would be the smart thing for you to take it easy for a while. Frightened. The great Gil Favor, frightened. I would prefer to think of it as being discreet, very discreet. There is something very big going on here, it seems. And it seems like we're not big enough to fight it at the moment. Favor, you disappoint me. I just wonder who is behind it. It's got to be somebody bigger than Malloy Slake. And I can't even imagine who that might be. Now, I heard them mention the name of... Ryan Powers. Yeah. That could be the Crown Brothers. You sure? Well, I've seen their picture in the paper a couple of times. Send us ahead. We're to say that he'll be here momentarily and to see that everything's prepared. Don't you think he might be tired after that long ride? Are you Loy Slake? That's right. Hey, you're right. You know, that's the biggest outlaw in America. You ever seen him? No. Nope. I don't think you'll worry about arrest. Did you get the gold? Yeah, I had somebody get it. Good. Sounds like a bank job. I'm Harley Lear. Each of these small sacks contains about $3,000 in gold. See, if you want us to smuggle, the answer flat out is no. Argumentative, isn't he? No, we don't want you to smuggle it. We want you to accept it. By we, I don't mean us. I mean Ryan Powers. Ryan Powers wants you to accept it. And who is Ryan Powers? You. You must be Loy Slate. Well, I had no idea the deadliest man in America would look so boyish, so unworried. That is Ryan Powers. Excuse me. Well, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy getting this conglomeration of the most wanted men in the U.S. together. Well, now, which is which? Never mind, we'll have time for that. All I have to say is if you're wanted, I can't figure out why. You are without a doubt the most repulsive, meanest, ugliest looking bunch of scum I've ever seen. And who'd want that is more than I can understand. 
You couldn't look any worse if you tried. <laughs> well, that is Ryan Power. Shake hands with Ryan Powers. Horse flesh and toilet water. What a smell. Come on now, Favor, shake hands. The exchanging of a grip means nothing except to seal an agreement, that is, and we don't have any agreements now, do we? <laughs> All we did was shake hands man to man without any obligation. Still, no obligation. Nothing to be afraid of, Harley. Leave it open. Guy wouldn't touch his money with a ten-foot pole. I wouldn't do that, Mr. Denver. Why not? Well, if for no other reason, then. It's just say it seems sort of wasteful. You sell out fast, don't you? I'll uh, hang on to it for you. You change your mind, you want it back. Just let me know. Loy, you sure brought me a dandy. Well, I'm just trying to do my part. What's his name? Horace Denver. Hmm. And he's real argumentative. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a real bobcat. <laughs> That's good. Hey, uh, tell me something. Uh, what do you want with him? He's part of my plan, Slake. You'll find out when the time comes. Now, bring Gil Favor to me. Harley! I want everyone outside. How do you size up uh, Favor? Well, he's just what we want. Is he going to need uh, influencing? I expect so. I'm distressed to hear that, Ryan. Harley, if you have any more of these adolescent remorses, you can leave. I can't be concerned with what you think. There is much too much to do. I'm sure you'll want to meet everyone. By now, you have a good idea of the caliber of men we've brought together. And purely for the purpose, I might add, of meeting you. Gentlemen. Mr. Favor, probably the best cattle boss in the United States, and therefore in the world. Meet Lois Lake. Young, eager, cool. You've heard of him. He's wanted everywhere, but we've got him. Meyer Trask. A man who's never known fear and never known love, a dangerous foe. Jasper Rowe and Copper Roberts, they'll take anything in the Southwest that isn't bolted down and then sell it for liquor and riotous living. Bowie Fisk and Joe Spanish, I believe you know already. Bolt Carson, Cooley Addison, you met on the trail. 
two renowned almost as much as Lois Lake, the Crown Brothers. Mason Crown, Wilson Crown. They've probably had their hands on as much gold as the men in the mint. They haven't got a cent to show for it. Their loss is our gain. One newly calloused fellow who rode 800 miles just to meet you. Harley Lear, my left-hand man who keeps track of my many plans. And lastly, but not leastly, Levi Windsor, a member of the underworld in good standing in our contact with them. It's a full life, full life. Now go get your roommate. We're going to have a little meeting in the living room. To prevent any misunderstanding at this meeting, put all your guns over here. show of independence is not going to help at this time, Mr. Denver. Is that so? And it's not going to help any more after we hear their plans. I'll just play a waiting game for a while. You know, that big, fine reputation of yours is just so much hogwash, isn't it? Were you just making a deal with Ryan Power? I was just being interviewed like he was. Interviewed? Now, what makes you think I was being interviewed? You gone loco? Uh-huh. So? And lied to me. What did you expect? Look, whatever happens, do me one thing. Just sit tight for now. I don't like this any more than you do. Believe me. All right. You men are being organized into the first cross-country, cross-industry group of financial wizards in the United States. I'll tell you what I mean. We are taking over the beef industry, gentlemen, from top to bottom. All the way from hooved cattle on up to restaurants. We can do this because beef is the only industry that turns on one man, the trail boss. If we can control the cattle under his command, then that industry is ours. Think about that. We are going to organize the trail bosses, all of them. They'll be forced to deal with our people acting as buyers at prices we set. And once we have that cattle under control, we will control all prices, all the way from the railhead on up to the restaurants. Sounds great. One major trail boss setting the pattern by selling to our men will cause others to follow and fall in line. They'll have to. The one reason will be that there won't be any other place for them to go to. And we have you outlaws helping us, preventing the old buyers from re-establishing new avenues of commerce. Well, that's all there is to it. It's as simple as that. All we have to do is do it and keep others from doing it too. I don't think we'll run into much resistance. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Mr. Denver? Does this appeal to you? Wouldn't you like to be rich instead of puny like you are? No, I wouldn't. Easy, Denver, easy. What you're proposing is an evil, vicious scheme. It'll destroy the meat business as we know it. And I, for one, want no part of it now or ever. 
And I'll do everything in my power to prevent you taking the cattle business over. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly, Mr. Denver. Mr. Favor, how do you like the way we get things done? Are you impressed? Oh, I was impressed, all right. I venture to say that we all were. Then I take it we can count on you for your help and advice. I'll do everything I can. Good. I was hoping you'd say that. You won't be sorry, Favor. None of us will. We're all going to be very rich from this, and we're all going to be very good friends. Have a seat, senor. What's the matter? You one of us or ain't you? I feel like sitting down. Is that all right with you? No, it ain't all right with me. And it ain't all right with them, either. I thank you for the seat. <laughs> That's better. Yesterday, a churchgoer. Today, an outlaw. How's that for a colorful career on the range? <laughs> Spanish. Stop acting so ludicrous. Mr. Favor. Well, are you ready? Ready? Ready for what? I don't like seeing you on edge, Favor. You're not having second thoughts about anything, are you? I told you I'd help you, and I will. Now, what more do you want? Now, look, Favor, you don't have to sit over there with those men if you don't want to. I want you to think of yourself as an executive in this operation, not a handyman like these others. Well, thank you for the promotion. Set up the table where I told you and bring the buyer out. We've got to close this fast and nail favor. He's getting jumpy. Right. Shouldn't let it get to you, Favor. Oh, then. You looking to be friendly? We're going to be working together. Uh, just hope under better conditions. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. I don't like unnecessary killing. Oh? Favor! Over here! Sit down. Sit down, my friend. We're going to have some pleasure by doing a little business. Making our first money together. And under the eyes of all these witnesses. Now, you just sign here. Now, this says you sell one of your herd to one of our buyers for $24 a head. But I can't do that. This line here. I've already got an option out on my herd. Options don't mean a thing. Might be some legal repercussions. You wouldn't want that. There won't be any legal repercussions. Now sign, Favor. Sign it. All right. Hello, girl. Hello, bro. Thank you. 
Witness. Everyone inside. It's time for Mr. Favor's lecture to begin. three trails that have cattle on them at the moment. Each has a large herd. The Santa Fe, the Jones, the Plumber, and the Chisholm. Tie up these herds plus mine, and you control the four major herds in America that are ready for market, some eight to 10,000 head of prime beef, which can swing the market any way you want to. Two days before these herds reach their destination, a buyer, one of our men naturally, will arrive and start negotiating for the sale of the herd. The trail boss will sell to him because somehow or other, no other buyers will show up. If by any chance the trail boss becomes suspicious or hostile, another buyer will be brought into the picture. The two men will get angry with each other and start uh, competing in price, each trying to outbid the other. That should pretty well cinch it and convince him. But we shouldn't get greedy and start out at too low a price. To keep it realistic, we should start out gradually. One last thing. The most important thing is to convince a trail boss that you are on the level. Best way to do that is be on the level. If you can honestly say that the favor herd has been sold to you, and the other trail bosses will sell to you too, and the next group of buyers going out will be able to say just exactly that. And that is why I have been asked to come here, to set the pattern. Right. Any questions? Yeah. What if prices are real low and there's no market for beef? That's just the situation we're looking for. When there's an extra supply of beef, we'll buy real cheap and keep it off the market. After the prices have gone up, we'll make a killing. We'll have all the big companies, including the railroads, begging. Anything else? And you men can go. You'll get your instructions tonight and ride out first thing in the morning. I'm impressed. I don't mind telling you I misjudged that man. Under that hat he wears, there's a real brain. You're going to be a great asset, Favor. I'm afraid there's a little bit of a liability under this hat, too. You see, I want a piece of the action, too. A what? That's right. You want me so bad, pay me. And if I don't? I guess you could kill me, but you see, I'm single, owe no ties, and so I haven't got too much to lose. But you, with your little scheme, do, and I figure that gives me a pretty good bargaining position. I like a hard-headed businessman. Good. And uh, why don't we send him on his way and thrash out the details? Get rid of Brew? Well, there's no sense for anybody else to know just how much you're going to be taken for. You heard the man. Get going. Bring Mr. Brewster's horse out front. Goodbye, Brewster. And remember, be very careful about the way you handle things. Well, you can forget the big smile now, Mr. Powers. I wasn't fooling. I think this is a pretty good chance for me. I'll want 5%. 2% and it's a deal. I've just run out of any helpful information. 4%. Good for a start. Next year, another 3.5%. We'll see. Oh, I'll want it in writing. Why in writing? Now, that's the way all the uh, big moguls do it, ain't it? 
Well, all right. Good. Ali? Mr. Powers will uh, want you to write out a little note to me. And I want to have it read to all the men so that they know who has the say-so in buying. Hmm? Favor, you're getting a little power mad, aren't you? Well, uh, don't we all? All right, everybody inside. Just vanish. There's all of you. Come on. Mr. Powers wants to talk to you. Just be a few minutes. As a matter of fact, I want you men to know that I'm giving favor a percentage of the profits. How much? Uh, how much? Four. You'll start at four. You'll see how things go. If they go well, the next year he'll get more. In the meantime, he'll be in charge of all the selling and buying of the cattle. You'll take all your orders directly from him and me on occasion. favor. to go along, Gil. They threatened my family. I had to play a waiting game, same as you. You gonna be all right? I managed to get them out of town. But I had to play along, hoping it wouldn't be found out. Waiting game's a bad game, Ed. The worst. One consolation, though. What's that? Where did this ever get out? It'll set us up as being two of the best cattlemen in the business. Why else you think Phoebe'd want you for dinner? That's on Thursday night. I'd kind of like to make that if we're still alive. You'll be alive. What makes you so sure? Well, you've got to be. I owe you money. You won't let yourself get killed. Got a point there, Brew. Got a point. Uh-uh. Go on outside. Go on outside and get those guns. Did you hear what I said? Go on out and get those weapons. 
Here you go, Powers. It was your idea. We'll all go out together. There's only two out there. I said you go. Now look, there's a half dozen rifles on those horses. When I go out the front door, you go out the side window. They can't cover both. Bowie. All right. Hold it, Brew. Boys! Go ahead, strap it on. It won't fit. And try it like it is. Watch it, girl. Don't blame you for being sore about me messing up the deal, but let me explain something first. Very good, Slake. Let him have it. Tell me something, Harley. Were you for or against the murder of Horace Denver? I was against it. You know I was. All right, then shut up. You understand? It never would have worked anyways. It just would have forced him to import foreign beef. I don't want to hear anything more about the cattle business favor. <laughs> Robbing trains is a good, simple life. All right, let's get out of here. Now, that's careless of me. The gold. Oh, yeah. Now, if I was a good-hearted outlaw that you read about in the newspapers, why, I'd probably leave the gold with you for Denver's wife and the child. But I'm not. I'm heartless. I guess we can work out as partners. Why not? But after you, brother. <laughs> Got the feeling the ride back might be a little lonesome. and nights get mighty big. There's a lot of danger a man can understand, and a lot he can't. That's the kind I hate, the kind I can't understand. I'm Gil Favre, trail boss. That's it. It's just a high place. We'd joke and talking, you'd think that no one plateau had two heads and was spitting fire. Roddy, sometimes I think you're so ignorant you couldn't drive nails in a snowbank. Maybe it's just that I don't spook every time we look at something hard to do. Uh, 
How'd it go? There's only a few men willing to sign on. Get rid of that place up there like a monster's on it. As soon as the herd's white, better find some good head ground. They'll need all the rest they can get before we hit that plateau tomorrow. And we'll need all the extra riders and supply wagons we can get. It's not much of a town. I don't think you're gonna be too happy with the hands I round up for you. What I hear we may run into up there, I'd say we don't have much choice. I say that is one beautiful senorita. <laughs> I'm telling you, you wouldn't know a beautiful senorita if you saw one. Ah, I can say you've been around cows so long that if a beautiful woman even moves at you, you're gonna try and put her back in a herd. Look, look, Riggs, how could you ever think that any muchacha but one from my own people could have such beautiful legs as that, huh? Wanna know what I think? Oh. I think you're so drunk, boy, that you couldn't hit the ground with that great, big, beautiful hat of yours if you had two tries. Oh. Well, maybe you... Just trying to play the curly wolf with me, huh, amigo? I don't like no curly wolf. I don't care. <laughs> My name's Favor. I came here to hire trail hands. I'm paying a bonus because our next stretch is going to be rough. And I need men bad. But it looks like I came to the wrong place. $50 wages plus $50 bonus once we've got the cattle over the high ground. A lot cheaper, enough. Pushing cattle over the plateau this time of year. Maybe it's too cheap. <laughs> uh, well, I, I guess it's better to die up on that rock than in some stinking hole like this, huh? <laughs> yeah, I go. Ask you something? Great country. What do they call you Arkansas for? Oh, so this is my young friend. Some of the outfits I work for, they call one of these the Arkansas toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> That fellow outside the camp snooping around. Said he wanted to join up. He one of the men you talked to today? I never saw him before, and he's no cowhand. He's one of them fancy talking fellas that spouts words eight to the pound. One thing is, he's got a good, sturdy looking wagon. Said he wanted to talk to you. Saver, my name's Tom Ryan. I heard you were looking for men. I'm looking for cowmen. I'll do any job you assign me. I see. Mr. Bryan, suppose I asked you to relieve the swing rider or help him up the herd. Well, I'll do any job within my limited ability. Sorry. Mr. Fair, 
Aren't you forgetting something more valuable than my services? My wagon. With additional men, you'll need some kind of conveyance for the added supplies. You sound like an educated man, Mr. Bryan, not a trail drover. What makes you want to go along? You can't eat any education. Have you heard what we're likely to run into up there in the plateau? Mr. Favor, fact remains, I'm a man, educated or not. I heard you needed them. Well, we could use your wagon, all right. And I suppose somewhere we can use you. $30 pay plus $50 when we're over the high stretch. Thank you, Mr. Favor. Thank you very much. Come on to camp. I'll have the cook give you some grub. I'm not hungry. If you'll just tell me where you want the wagon. We'll make this a bed wagon. You'll carry bedrolls, war bags, things to lighten the horses. Put down by the remuda. A remuda is where we keep horses, Mr. Bryan. I suppose you will know a horse when you see one. Uh, yes. Of course I will. Good. Riders come, boss. How many? Four. If those interested in the cattle, though, they're riding right past that bed ground. Well, he's all pulling himself who ride or not. You know Mark and so? to see me. His name is Jefferson Devereux. He's a big man around here. Only land as far as he can fly. This looks like an old man to me. He may be a little long on years, but no one has ever saw his ones off yet. What do you reckon he wants here now? Whatever it is, senor. He take it. I'm Jefferson Devereux. And I, mister? I'd know you standing a mile away with a skin burned off your face. You're a born and bred cowman. You can be proud of that. My name's Favor. Climbing over the plateau a little late, aren't you? That's right. Heard about the winds that come up there this time of the year? I've heard. Well, Texas beef's not used to that sort of thing. Most likely run right off the mountaintop if you find a strong chubasco. Uh, that's what we call dust storms. When the wind comes up wholesale. I hope to get the herd through before that happens. Well, then you've got your work cut for you, so I won't keep you. I, uh, I'm looking for a man and a woman who are traveling together. Can't describe the man to you. Never met him. But it doesn't matter. Wherever the man is, the woman will be. There's no woman in this camp. As soon as I look around your camp and talk to your men, I'll leave. Mr. Devereux, you and your men are welcome to coffee. But you're not going to look around my camp, and you're not going to talk my men. Now, if you don't want coffee, you're going to leave. With a herd that size, I'd say you signed on 20, maybe 25 droves. Not that many. Well, my outriders have got back to bring 40 men. Oh? Of course, it depends what they find out when they start asking around where the woman is. But... She's within five miles of your camp. I'll be back. Forty men or four hundred. You don't have the right to ride into my camp. Mister, the woman I spoke of, she gives me the right. She's my wife. We 
Fishbone? Yeah, boss. You spot the North Star last night? I find that wagon tongue right at it. Good. Miss Favor, this camp's nervous. I heard men shuffling on all night. And it ain't just that rock up there. Devereaux's looking for a woman. Now, you seen any running around this camp lately? Mr. Favor, seems like I ain't seen a woman anywhere in 10 years. Well, then, this camp's got no reason to be scared of Devereaux. Pete, that's the word we follow the tongue straight north. We've been uphill climb all day, so double the riders on swing and flank. Signing on to push cattle is one thing. Getting poisoned another altogether. And this coffee of yours, uh, you got to chew for you can swallow it. And as for your stool, you... What's the matter with it? Has it got a little bit too much bite to it? Mushy! Ain't I told you greenhorns don't like ranch for breakfast? Oh, you're smart, aren't you? Why, Grace, you... maybe you better take your station. You can't give me one yet. Well, I'll give you one now. You ride drag. Maybe if you eat enough dust, you'll get fond of Wishbone's cooking. Sally, please keep out of sight. Someone will see you. We have to do this to these people. He'll follow. Thank you. Let's butt the saddles. You hear me? Off and on. Riggs. Senor Favor, I think already you men are starting to get a little edgy, huh? You want to find that most men who run into Devereaux get a little edgy. All right, let's head up. Right of right, they're dropped behind. Rachel, if this happened again, you'll be right drive to one, the other side of the plateau. You hear me? Yes, Mr. Favor. Get on the bed roll, four legs. All in the back, Mr. Favor. Right on the back left. Don't worry more dust on that here that can be helped. Yes, sir. Stream ahead. Chances are it's the last we'll hit till we get off the plateau. How's it look? Well, there's a real narrow hog back that runs along there with bangs that drop off plum china. We can't ever spook and we got trouble. And something else up there, too, besides the hog back. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen him. Boy, I call that morning's work. We must have heard of those cows about five miles since. Sound just start trying to kill each other. What's going on between you two? Look, 
as long as I have you for company, I'll walk up to the devil himself. But there's no room for you in this. There's no room at all. <laughs> Think of the plateau now, senor Faye. I think it's high and it's witty. Yeah. I think you cows are already begin to get a little scared. We'll make it. Well, you, you're coming into the, the west part now. This this land goes for maybe 20 miles, this table land. And then at the north end is the only way to get off one little path. That's the only way. Now the drop off on the cut banks as bad as they are here. No part of it gets any better till you get through that north pass. The winds? Huh. At this time of year, you you wait till the big wind stops. night guard with the herd, aren't you? Yeah. This wind's making the herd edgy. See that none of the new hands do anything to spook them. Well, Mr. Favor, uh, that visit Jefferson Devereaux paid us, and that woman he was looking for, you know, said it was his wife? Yeah. Well, no. I'll bet a man like Devereaux would buy his wife a pretty white veil like this. Where did this come from? I just found it in this bush. My guess is it came from one of those wagons. I unloaded the bedrolls and more bags, Mr. Favor. Anything else in the wagon? No, just my things. This one of your things, Brian? Open the wagon. Tom. What do you plan to do? She your wife? No. She Devereaux's wife? Yes. Suppose she was your wife. What would you expect me to do? If you'll let me explain, Mr. Fay. Mr. Devereaux said he'd be back. Try to explain it to him. <laughs> I came to tell you that I'm sorry for what I did. But it was our only chance of getting away from it. When I first started trailing cattle, I worked for an old trail boss who'd always warned his new men. There were only two things to watch out for, being let a foot and a decent woman. You sure prove him out. I told you I was sorry. I gave your husband reason to come shooting his way in my camp. Maybe some of my men will be killed. But it'll be all right, because you're sorry. Mr. Favor, marriage is just a word. 
It means different things to different people. You just make it easier by the minute for me to do what I have to do. I never spent one night in Jefferson Devereaux's home. That's what I want to explain to it's you. It's no concern of mine, Mrs. Devereaux. That isn't the reason you won't listen to the truth, Mr. Faber. Don't be ashamed that you're frightened of Jefferson Devereaux. Most men are. Up until two weeks ago, I was living in St. Louis with my foster parents. That's where I met Tom. We planned to be married as soon as I reached legal age. But my guardians met Jefferson Devereaux on one of his trips east. He made them a profitable offer for my hand in marriage. There was nothing I could do. But you are married to Devereaux. The wedding was yesterday. It was during the party after the ceremony that Tom got to town. And he planned to run away long. Will you know the rest? As I said, Mr. Fever, marriage means different things to different people. What does it mean to you? Arkansas, but I am. No, no, a man such as you never surprised at anything or anybody. You saw the woman? I saw. You running out on the drive? You sure had that figured out by now? You got $30 coming to sign an arm. You don't get the bonus. You didn't seize over the plateau. The $50 bonus? You didn't earn it. I'll give you your pay now, and you can get out without the other men seeing you. I'm not interested in the pay or even the bonus. You want to see me turn the man and woman over to Devereaux? Devereaux, he's going to take him whenever he's ready. And what do you want? Total. Everything. What? Look, I know about you trail bosses. I know the money you carry in the saddlebags. Not to buy cattle to replace the ones you lose. To hire new trail hands. To pay your way through the land people who don't want you to go through. I bet you you got maybe 5,000 pesos in those saddlebags. That's what I want. All of it. It's on the other side of the fire. Those are my men. Ah, I know. That's why you got to be real careful not to wake none of them up. The first barrel here is for you. The second barrel is for whichever one you wake up, even accidental like. rough around here when Deborah come for that man and woman. That's why I need the money. I gotta have it to make it start someplace else. You leave it right where it is, Arkansas. Rowdy, you keep your voice down. Even if that bullet go right through my head, I still got time to put both barrels in Senor Favor. Rowdy, when I tell you, I want you to kill Arkansas. Now, maybe a dead man can pull a trigger. Maybe he can't. If he can, you'll find the trail log map, list of owners, list of buyers in my saddlebags. You'll be in charge of the herd. Get him off this plateau before the Chabasco hits. When Mr. Devereaux comes in. In your favor. You talk like a man from the grave. You understand me, Roddy? Yeah. I believe you would let me shoot you. Now you know it wouldn't stop your trail hurt from getting through. In your favor, I, I listen to many men, but 
I believe you. So the light quick enough. Let him go, Ruddy. Could have shot. You didn't. You have no more trouble with me. Senor Favor, if you permit, I'd like to stay with you. I have a feeling I can take your word on that. Even when Mr. Devereaux comes in. Senor. Favor? I'm coming in. Hello? Hunter? Last night, I didn't know she was in my camp. It doesn't matter. Is the man and the woman ready to travel? They don't want to travel with you. They don't have any choice. Don't feel sorry for them, Mr. Favor. You don't have time to feel sorry. About those men I told you I was sending for, they're going to arrive at dawn, 40 of them. What are you going to do with your wife and Brian if I turn them over to you? You mean when you turn them over? As for my wife, my plans haven't changed. I want children. And the man? I've never met him, so my interest in him is limited. All I want to do is hang him. I see. So I should turn them both over to you right now, hmm? Well, you'd be doing everybody a favor around here if you did. If I don't? As I said, Mr. Favor, my men arrive at dawn. Why don't I just pull you off that horse and tie you up? Your free men wouldn't come riding in here if they knew it meant a bullet in your head, would they? The reason you won't do that, Mr. Favor, is because you know what I'm asking for is mine. Rightfully and lawfully. What your wife decides is something you'll have to settle between two of you. But I'm not going to turn any man over to you to be hanged. You understand? I do. But I don't think you do. Maybe you don't care about being killed, but we do. We're quitting your outfit. Arkansas? Not me. I like it where I am. Get back to camp. Crazy Rowdy. I don't know what's come over. First it's claw in the dirt, and now it's with guns. Where is he? Oh, Tom's wagon. All right, yellow belly. Riggs is giving you a chance to pick it up. Go ahead, I said, pick it up. I'll blow your head off. Hold it. Let her be. <laughs> Look, Mr. Favor, I told you it's no matter of yours. Anything that happens on Stripe is my matter, and nobody's going to forget it. Now, what's between you and Brian? You let him tell you. All right, I'll tell you. I don't wonder he'd run for another man's wife. I don't wonder nothing he'd do. It was when my platoon was captured by the Federals. We were sent to a compound down in Arizona. He was supposed to be a prisoner, too, only he decided it was better to get along. That for him, the war was over. He gave his parole. He wouldn't try to escape. Well, we were rotting in caves 80 feet below the ground. He was up on top. We saw the sun be once a month, and he saw it every day. He got all the food and water he wanted. And some of what he got could have saved some lives down where we were. Well, I'll tell you. Everybody in that prison made a pact. The first man to set his eyes on Tom Bryan was to stomp his life out. There'd be no stopping the life out of any man on this drive. Our business is getting us heard over that plateau. Let's get some sleep so we can do it. Riggs, just throw down your idea. 
Well, now, Mr. Favor, it seemed like a good idea to me. If we'd let Roddy kill this hard-talking yellow belly, the woman would have left camp and you wouldn't have had to step in. Now, do you want to walk back to your blanket? Or do you want to be knocked back? Your husband was here earlier. He's coming back for you. We're both here. Well, what do you think I can do? I've got 3,000 head of cattle on top of a mountain that's known for storms that can blow us all to the edge if we don't get through in time. I've only got half enough men. Only six of them I can trust. After what Browdy said, you think I can count on any help from the others? It's all right, to favor. We understand. Your responsibility is to the people who hire you to get the cattle through safely. We have no right to stand in your way. We'll be ready when Mr. Darrow comes. It's about time to start pulling your weight in this drive. Go get a horse and relieve Butler on night herd. If you can't ride a horse, lead him. Just stay out there until you're spelled. Yes, sir. Mr. Fever. It doesn't matter about me anymore. But there's something I want you to know about Tom. He wasn't like Rowdy and the others in that prison. He felt the same way, but he wasn't like them. But some men are strong. Others are not so strong. Tom couldn't stay down there with the others or go through what they did. Oh, he tried, but it just couldn't bear up, so he gave in. Well, he's paid for it, Mr. Favor. Trying to live it down inside himself ever since. But some things you can never pay for or live down. And one of them is being the way you are. Oh. All right, fall out, you brush poppers, and see if it's there. Fall out. I guess we tie on our own bed walls and war bags this morning. Seeing as how we're losing Blind's wagon. You can get your grub. Mr. Perry. He's here. <laughs> down from the North Pass of Johnstown. I'll release Brian there. If you want to see it punished, you can take it up with Sheriff. I uh, say, and my wife? She's free to go with you any time she chooses. Go back to the wagon and ask her. I thought I made it clear it doesn't make any difference what she decides. It does to me. The trail boss of her like that means you're pretty good. That you specialize in getting your cattle through. Not playing God. I'll get my kettle through. And I'll get my wife. Hold your fire! I had to kill you. If you come any closer, you'll have to kill me. Unless you want to die yourself. I only came to demand what is my own. In front of these people, in front of my own men, you've seen me. I could raise my hand and they'd be killing. And you'd come to me or you'd be dead. I won't do that. The only way I can rub out my shame is for you to come to me on your own. Begging, calling. And before you leave the bateau, that will happen. If she's got one ounce of decency, when she sees what's going to happen to all of you, she'll come to me on her knees, screaming for me to take back. <laughs> Rack up your gear. Wishbone, jump down. 
gotta get this herd removed. Get off this rock before we're blowing off it. <laughs> so interesting up in the hills. What we don't find that makes the interest. What do you think happened to Daryl and that army of his? I wouldn't know. You got that feeling, Mr. Aver? What feeling? He isn't far away. There's Daryl out around that next bend. We're keeping company, too. Of course, size Daryl went by not long ago. Wind's getting stronger. How far is that look past, Pete? With a little luck, we ought to be down by them tomorrow. Maybe we'd better not count on any luck. Rowdy, squeeze on the herd. Keep trying to get as close as you can. Right. Cattle are going down as fast as we can tail them up. I don't think they can take it anymore. And we just keep tailing them up every time they go down. what Mrs. Devereaux said. Didn't seem to make much difference. I want to thank you for what you did for us with Devereaux. It must have been a difficult decision for you. How would you know? It's true. I'm, I'm a school teacher, and I know nothing whatever about the cattle business. What a man does is not as important as how much he believes in it. You've built something for yourself in the cattle business because you believe in it. And in protecting two strangers, you may have destroyed everything made of your life. It was my decision made. Yes. And I, I wish I could say it was the right decision, but I can't. Because I just don't know. Change your mind about Brian and the uh, lady? What do you mean, change my mind? I mean, about cutting that wagon out, like Devereaux said. They go with us all the way to Johnstown. Well, I, I guess Riggs has ideas of his own. He just pulled them out. Trying to do rigs. Well, I tell you, Mr. Faber, I don't like the sight of blood, especially when it's my own. We were figuring on giving Mr. Devereaux his prize package and hanging it on our necks. Anytime you think you're ready to run this drive, you let me know. Hold on, Mr. Faber. Take a look over there, we. <laughs> That height is off a of fresh kill steer. It's got your hood's road brand on it. Where'd this come from? We found just outside of camp the morning with that hanging rope on it. I'd say Devereaux's painting a pretty clear picture. You would have give him the yellow belt to use that rope on. Well, the rest of the hood's gonna end up dead just like this one, and I'll ride along with it. Well, listen, Riggs. There's only gonna be one trail boss with this outfit. What's the matter with you, Mr. Favor? You bounced a saddle so long you forgot I can't. Devereaux's got twice as many men as you have. Riggs? Hey, boss! North Pass just on the next rise. All right! Squeeze down the herd! Let's move off this rock! All right, Riggs. Let's move out. 
favor. Now I know what Devereaux's had in mind for us all along. He's waiting for us up at the path. You seen it? Not exactly. But I didn't get that from no bone arrow. <laughs> Where the shot came from. All right, Pete. You hold here. It might not stop with just a shot through your sleeve, you know. head get through that pass. Only there may not be a pass. It's set with enough dynamite up there, close it forever. If they light those fuses, your only chance to get off the plateau alive is gone. You can stop playing God, Mr. Favor. Mrs. Devereaux was coming to me, just as I said she would. Devereaux was right. I'm going up there to him. I crawled there to him. No, you won't. It's Tom, Mr. Favor. He's gone to Jeff and Devereaux. He's already let them kill him. He hopes that Devereaux will let the rest of us through. What do you think of the yellow belly now? You stay here. Mr. Favor! She's right. Let her go. She stays. No, she doesn't. Go down your gun. Like I say to you, back in that stinking town is better to die here on the rock. Oh, is on to die with you, amigo. gotta say but say it quick i didn't send brian up here he came up his own he was willing to be hanged if you'd leave sally alone there's one thing you haven't thought of Devereaux. he didn't steal that girl from you 
She was his in the first place. It was you that stole her from him. You will live like that knowing you stole her? You want to face people the rest of your life wondering what they're thinking about Jefferson Devereaux, who wasn't man enough to earn a wife, had to steal her. All right, Mr. Devereaux. Here I am. If you want me to crawl, I'll crawl. I'm making you as you say I would. Don't kill Tom. Let him go with the others. I'm begging you. What's it going to be, Devereaux? Having the marriage grabbed off the books. Pete, Roddy, take Tom and the young lady to the wagon. A man like you might even beat old Chewbacca through that pass. Ask any townsman along the Sedalia, Missouri Trail, and he'll tell you the drovers are nothing but bubble. They work hard, play hard, fight hard. They're sons of the devil. But if you want to hear their side, just ask me. Favor's my name, Trail Boss. Over there! It's Fee! Mr. Favor, over here! Snakes to his horse, he's thrown, gored by a steer. How the heck did he get thrown? Get him, get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. You feeling lucky? Probably feels worse than it is. I hope you are feeling lucky, cuz I'm just played out. Boy, he's bleeding pretty bad. It's down a dozen miles off the trail. Well, I can stop the bleeding, but you try to move him and the figures the life will bleed right out of him before we get him there. Then we bring the doctor to him. Roddy, let's go.
Dr. Jackson? I'm looking for Dr. Jackson. Young man. You're interrupting what in Ireland would be called a wake. Pa, he's a stranger. But we're not mourning the dead. We're mourning our own guilt. Are you Dr. Jackson? No. There he is. Dr. Jackson? My name's Faber. I'm boss of a herd in the Sedalia Trail. One of my men's are bad. Yesterday we had us a lynching. Look, Doctor, a man's dying. He needs your help. I'm in no mood to help anyone. Do you want to ride on your horse or across him? I'll need my bag. Eddie, will you get my bag? You must rate this fellow pretty high. That I do. Shotgun, Tom. I want Kells more. Well, that won't help your son. He's dead. Lynched is the word. And it's simple justice to hand up the same treatment to the ones responsible. Well, the whole town is responsible. Why pick on one man? We got the sheriff locked in his own jail. He let the mob get Ben. Kells Morgan led the mob. When we find him, we're gonna sing them both up. What'll that give you? We're gonna hang him in the middle of town. We're gonna hang him so high every time the good, decent, law-abiding folk of Provo look up, they'll remember what they did to a boy that never reaches majority. He was guilty, Jed. I ain't arguing that. This town's locked up till we find Kells Morgan. Get their guns. How long do you think you can hold us? We'll complete our chores by sundown. Until nobody leaves Pro. Nobody comes into Pro. Mister, with your permission, I'd like to leave with the doctor. Who are you? When did you get in town? My name's Saber. I'm a trail boss. A friend of mine is hurt real bad over in the Sedalia Trail. I'm sorry about that, son. I can't take chance. All we want is the duck. You might just run into a Texas Ranger or something. After sundown, you freeze bird. That may be too late. That's the best I can do. Mister, you might be killing a man you don't even know. Pa, ah, let him go. You forget how your brother died? You gonna let another man's trouble take importance or our grief? No, he don't go. I don't care how many men die. It ain't gonna turn us from I. I got a little chore for the law-abiding folk. They're gonna build us a gallows for two. Find this fellow Morgan in a hurry, huh? 
maybe soon. There's Dibson's Lumber Company down there. You'll find all the lumber you need there. You can get all the hammers and saws and nails down at Jimison's. All right, move! isn't here, I swear it. I hardly know him. Sorry, ma'am, just checking for Kells and for Gus. But I don't have any guns. Sure you don't, but we'll just look. Let's talk to the doc. Maybe he'll make a run for her with us. You go ahead. I'll see if I can pick up on the horse at the livery stable. I'd like to talk to you, Doc. I hope you don't want to talk to me about what I think you want to talk to me about. I hate to disappoint you. Young man, if this were any other day in the world, you wouldn't have to ask me twice. Charles Morgan wouldn't be here, would he, Doc? No, not unless he's down in the basement with the other rats. Well, how about weapons, Doc? No, they're the only weapons they use. Well, your pa's making a serious mistake. You've, you've always been a hard-working family, except Ben. I like you, Doc. Don't say anything against Ben. We'll leave it that way. I brought each one of you Mason boys into the world. Your mother was the finest woman I've ever known. She'd hide her head with shame as she'd be here to witness how you're manhandling friends. She'd want us to do just like we're doing. Ben was Ma's favorite. This man has a friend who's dying, and you won't let me help him. Doc, we got a brother dead. Ben was our favorite, too. Why didn't you see how it is? Look, Doc, I got two horses on that livery stable. Can I run anything in this state? I never saw a horse got to run a bullet. I've seen Brett missing up on that roof. He's got a buffalo gun. I always thought the doctor was above everyone else. He'd help a sick man no matter what. A dead doctor can't help anybody. You know, you don't need the name, doctor. A young fellow like you is wasting your time. You've got a fast horse and a disrespect for the martinship of the Masons. There's a ranger camp 30 miles to the south. You get the rangers to clear a path for me to your sick friend. I might. Wait, wait. You, you can't turn me out. You're killing me. Tell they find me hide you, they'll kill me. No, please, Art, please. You open for business? What can I do for you? Some feed and rub down? Come on out, Kills. It ain't the Masons. Let me stay, Art. Let me stay. I said, come down. You can't turn me like I was a dog. Well, you've known me for ten years. We've been friends, Art. I've known you for ten years. Mister, you can't let him turn me out. Please, they, they'll kill me. You stirred everybody up. You deserve it. Well, why is everybody treating me like I was a crow? It was Ben Mason that murdered a decent white man in Provo. Everybody was glad enough for to yell for his neck yesterday. And today you turn your backs on me. How about the sheriff? How about him? He tried to stop the mob from taking Ben Mason? Sure he did. But he was hit on the head from behind. He was out cold when the hanging took place. 
They find him, then the sheriff swings too. Yes, but the, the sheriff wasn't at fault. He was unconscious, just like I said. The sheriff don't deserve to die. Pete needs a doctor. We got no call to butt in. The sheriff has a chance if they don't find him. Yeah, that's right. I'm looking out of here for a spell. When I come back, I don't want to see you around. Oh. Wait a minute. Did you get anywhere the duck? No. Uh, he said there's a ranger station 30 miles south of here, though. Put the saddle back on my horse. We gonna try to make a run for it? Any kind of a break, I ought to be able to get out of range of that buffalo gun. What do you mean, you? A piece of friend of mine, too, you know. You send a man to his death, and you carry with you the rest of your life. I know. Told old man Mason he'd be murdering a man if he wouldn't let us ride out of town. We'd be doing the same thing if we turned over Kells. We'd be murdering the sheriff. Yeah, but Pete's in a bad way. Pete's got a chance. The sheriff hasn't. Settle my horse. Mason, sit down. You've got to help me, so please. Take hold of yourself. Have that horse ready for me. Come on. Too much open country to make it to the hills. And well. Pa wants you down low. It's a telegraph. What? Telegraph? Where does it lead to? Union Army strong enough during the occupation. And left it for the Indian agent to communicate with the capital at Austin. If there's any good, though, the Mason must have cut it. You're in luck. Well, strike. Come on, find it. Well, if anything happens to you, nobody will know I'm down there. Well, you better pray that I stay healthy. I've been waiting for Jed to leave, but I can't wait no longer. Is 
Is your name Mason, ma'am? Nearly was. You wouldn't figure the men who put me in office would build gallows for me, would you, Minnie? for? Andy, you could get help. No, I couldn't. The Mace won't harm you. Out of respect to Ben. I want them fine, Kells. It was Kells so crazy jealous about you that made him make just Ben swing. It was over between Kells and me a long time ago. Maybe so. But it was alive enough in Kells and hurt bad enough for him to slug me from behind. He took chance to swing himself for the pleasure of watching Ben swing. I hope they find him. I know it's a weak thing to ask, but what about me? They're just bluffing. You can take a chance thinking that I can't. I got a bushel full of thanks from folks in this town over the years. I'd give the whole bushel full if somebody get on a horse and get some help. You'd ask a girl to do this? When I'm swinging, I'm not going to question the sex of the one who cuts me down. No, you're asking too much. Andy, you hunger so bad to see Kells killed. You don't care who gets killed with him, huh? Good-looking woman. According to what side of these bars you're standing on. Who are you? My name's Favor. I got a herd bedded down close by. All right, you've got a herd bedded down. What are you doing in a hole like this? Friend of mine with that herd is dying. Has to have a doctor. Is there any chance of uh, getting at those guns? The Mason's got the keys. I got a horse ready to make a run for the range camp, but uh, I'm just figuring it might be better odds to try those guns. Good citizens of Provo who put me in office. You'd have a bad chance with a horse. How about that telegraph wire? It's been cut. Yeah, I know, but suppose it could be fixed. Who operates? See the little man in shirt sleeves? Been carrying those boards? Yeah. Frank Sanford. He's the one who operated before it was cut. Uh-oh. I'm sorry a friend out of your herd still got to suffer. But the boys ain't turned up kills yet. Jed, you worked how many years getting a bunch of yours on a pay and basis? Ten? Twelve? Now you aim to throw it all away. You let them hang my boy. You're blind, so I ain't gonna argue with you. What about your other boys? They done back and labor right alongside all those years. You gonna let them be hunted off the land? My boys feel like I do. Then why are you waiting to string me up? I'm waiting to find Kells. I'll tell you why. You know your boys ain't killers. They couldn't stomach to see more than one hand. If you strung me up, they'd take off right then. You got until sundown. What'll happen come sundown and Kells ain't found? We'll find him. We have to burn down every house to smoke him out. We'll find him. I admire a man who'll risk his life for his partner. You hurt? I'm all right. I told you when the time was right, I was going to ride out. You were a long time coming back. Look, well, we're sitting around here. Pete Nolan's I out there. I haven't forgotten about Pete.
That's so nobody else will get any ideas. Well, this will make us real popular. You can round them up later. In the meantime, the only horses in town will be ours. All right, get to work. You ain't no use up in that tower. You're supposed to shoot anybody trying to make off. We come to kill the ones that caused Ben's death and nobody else. We're weak hearted about the way we do things. We're never going to get justice. Next time you stop a bullet. Mr. Mason, nobody can say you haven't got a grievance, but you're running down a wild road. What do you think I should do? Raise my hand like a kid in school and ask a federal judge to punish the one who did it? In 15 years, maybe I'd get some satisfaction. There's some here who had nothing to do with that lynching. This whole town's gonna sweat till I get my hands on Kells Morton. That might take some doing. You seen him? All I said was he might be hard to find. When I first set eyes on you, I liked your style. The more I see of you, the less I like it. Now, take a little advice. Don't get in my way again. Frank, get us another keg of nails. says you're the one who wants the telegraph. Yeah, but the wire's cut. The wire runs behind the cemetery. I figured uh, we'd take your telegraph key up there and attach it. Where is it? Back here in the store. But they're expecting me with them nails. Roddy will deliver them. We'll never get away with it. We'll never know unless we try. Cemetery. I'll take a look. Figures won't do no good, even for the message through. You know how far Austin is? Six, seven hours till sundown. That's time for help. We didn't bring nothing to cut this with. We'll use the end the mace to cut. Well, what? We didn't come here to look at this. 
Won't do no good to start sending now. Won't be nobody at the other end till three o'clock. You see, Provo ain't a regular station. Three o'clock every afternoon, they put a man on the other end to receive in case we got anything to say. That's two hours from now. Set it up, but we can't send until three o'clock. Guess it's feeding time for the animals. You're above all this, huh, Duck? This boy don't respect his elders. Doc, a man gored by a steer, what do you figure his chances? Well, according to where he was gored. In the belly. High or low? Low, about here. Ah, that's a point in his favor. You able to stop the bleeding? Mostly. Figures it isn't infected now, but it's a cinch to be by sundown. What would his chance be then? A lot less than now. If you got to him before sundown, if a bull gave milk, he'd be a cow. Know of anybody who can get something to eat? Well, the cafe's closed today for lack of enthusiasm on the part of the owner. You the owner? That's right. The cafe's closed, but my front door's open. Come on in. Mandy, we got guests. Come on in, fellas. Well, we ain't got much to offer. Just the best food, the sign of your grandy, and the best cook. Well, I'm, I'm not hungry. Oh, there's always something in the kitchen. My name's Harris, Sam Harris. This is my daughter, Mandy. Hello. Go, baby, this is Roddy Yates. I'll bring you what there is. Oh, well, sit down, fellas. You know, the Masons ain't themselves today. Any other day, Jed Mason wouldn't let your friends suffer. No, I've known the Masons maybe, maybe ten years. I never knew a finer family in my life. A lot of folks felt I was happy about what happened to Ben. But I wasn't. A lotion never makes anybody feel good. answer right away. Keep trying. It wasn't my fault. He made me do it. He forced me into it. Now move. Both of you. 
Got a couple dozen buildings in it. He left the board unturned. Well, they got him hit somewhere. Somebody's got him hit. I found him fooling the telegraph. They fix it? I fix it. You were warned. I told you you had your last one. If you hit him again, I'd kill you. You're in no position to make threats, sir. Miss Mason, it's my guess that for sundown, you end up murdering a lot more people, just the sheriff. You got me pegged wrong, Mr. Favor. You can't rile me to murder. Hanging the sheriff and kills Morgan is justice. The eyes of God and decent men's justice. You're like a loco steel. Anybody in your path has to be stopped to death. Paul, he didn't have nothing to do with the lynching. Paul, what happened to Ben was our fault. Your own brother. Ben killed a man. I ain't arguing that. You had a right to a trial. We can't change the fact that Ben's dead. He's right about one thing. We go on the way we are. I'm amazing they're going to be murderers. I want kills, Morgan. Unless I find him by sundown, I'll burn to the ground every stinking bill in this town. Well. Here. I'll go ahead and I'll take it. Now, you go on in there and make it up the old man. Guns in that jail. That's right. The only problem is getting them. Pa. Will. I give Ben everything I could. I give him the best bed and house, the best food. I went without so he could have the kind of clothes that pleasured him. I know, Pa. Why did he do it? Mason's been respected in these parts since we said. Let's go home, Paul. Well, there's some things men have to do to preserve the name men. We leave this business unfinished, we'll be miserable till the day we die. And the day we die, the ground will sit us right out of our grace with the shame of having a Mason in it. I don't care about myself, Pa, or the others, but you had a hard life and little pleasure. I see you in trouble. Guess I neglected you boys some because of Ben. I make it up, especially to you, Wilt. You're my youngest, now Ben gone. Let's go home, Paul. Come sundown, Wilt. Come sundown. There's a meeting inside. They want you to come. Well, we might as well get to the point. Our Jason here says that you left his livery stable with Kelly Morgan under your wing. That's right. The argument goes like this, Mr. Favor. Most of these fellas put the best years of their lives to their businesses. Every cent they got, all the work they put in through the years will go up in smoke, unless you give up Kells. When I rode in here a few hours ago, the whole town's in mourning, full of sorrow, because you'd let lynching happen. Now you want to do the same thing all over again and throw Kells to the wolves. He's no good anyway. That's not the point. 
The point is, to protect a skunk like Kells, we stand to lose all our property and maybe our lives. The sheriff stands to lose his life for certain. We figure we're just giving up Kells. No, we boys. What happens out tight, we got no control over. Now, wait a while. No sense of twisting it, so we're the guilty ones. We let a lynch happen. Guilt and shame. Got a good share of both. What are you so snippy about, Sam? You lose your eating place, what happens to you? The day I lost the use of my legs, I found out there are more important things in life than livery stables or medicine books or stores. Maybe Sam's right. Maybe it's time we stood up like men. What about our families? Are they supposed to starve? It's not my decision to make, it's yours. I got no right hiding kills at the risk of your town. He's in the old well behind the feed store. Well, now you know where he is. Anybody wants to turn him over to the Masons, go ahead. time today, I've been proud of my neighbors. What are we supposed to do? Just sit around until sundown and watch our town burn to the ground? No. The first thing you've got to do is get the sheriff of jail. You elected him. Stand behind him. How? Masons have got all the guns. The Yankees tried to collect guns in the south. There were more guns underground than there were on top. Why, I've got a Colt 45 in my cellar. Well, there's a squirrel gun my boy's got put away. Anybody else? Robbie and I will handle two of the guns. I'm pretty good with a squirrel gun. I'll take one. Masons, climb out. I'll tie the rope. Mr. Favor. They look like they're headed for trouble. The town's had enough, Will. They have guns. What do you reckon to do with them? Free and Sheriff. You'd better tell your pa. He'll never let you. Then the Mason will have to kill a lot of innocent people. And your pa who never did any harm to anybody will spend the rest of his days in jail. That is, if he isn't killed himself.
can pick you off like rabbits from that roof. We aim to be the sheriff. You aim to commit suicide. to the ranger camp. He had the crazy idea that if you brought them, everything would be all right with the family. Oh, boy. I shot my youngest. I shot my own boy. Wilt. Mr. Favor. I figure it's a good bet there'll never be another lynching in Provo. The liberty of entering your house, Doc. I figure we'd need these. We'll Thank need you. some horses, too. There's good grass on the other side of the hill. Your horses will be there. Good. Let's go. Tried to climb out of the well, the rope broke. Well, let's try and find those horses. the infection. The fever's going down. That's not what I asked. He's strong. <laughs> I wish I had his strength, but it'll be a while before he's on his feet. Thanks, Doc. some signposts to follow? Just worry about the steers. I'll catch up here. Close up that doggy. We don't want to lose it. The cowman's hat is the first thing he puts on when he gets up, and the last thing he takes off when he bets down. Summer, the wide brim shades his eyes from the sun. In winter, he pulls the brim down, ties it over his ears to avoid frostbite. He uses crown as a bucket, and the brim as a drinking cup. That's why a cow handle get the best hat he can. Because it's got to serve a dozen purposes its maker never dreamed of. The same thing goes for the men wearing the hats. I know, I'm Gil Faber, trail boss. <laughs> both ways for about five miles. What'd you find? Nothing but hills, no way around them. This uh, is a shortcut. The one you said it'd lop off three days? Well, we did save about two days until... Uh-huh. Well, those hills be fine for mountain goats. Only trouble is... We're not herding goats. You heard that, huh? Any towns near? The trail map says Mesa's about two hours ride down flat. Yeah, graze the herd. Keep looking for a way through, though. I'll ask around and miss it. What are they gonna do 
going on? Must be livery stable in town. Yeah, and a sheriff. I'm thinking of Sam Burton. Anybody remember him? It's been about 10 years. Maybe he won't remember us. Well, maybe he won't want to, but he will. This spread ain't more than a mile down the road. You mightn't remember us. I remember you, Gaff. Is your wife with you and the boy? There you are. Boy'd be about uh, 16 now, wouldn't he? That's right. Where is he? Boy's in Mesa with his mother. They're shopping. I ain't got no money, Gaff. I get along, that's just about all. Oh, we don't want any money, Sam. That's what we want. Oh, we got one saddle horse. One's all we need. Mark. Why'd you come here? Oh, his horse is lame. Lame horse can't keep up with a stagecoach, can it, Sam? But that's not what you wanted to know, is it? I'm sorry to hear you're not doing too well, Sam. I'm satisfied. You could do a lot better, a lot better, Sam. Twice a week, that San Antonio stagecoach comes to Mesa. Don't carry nothing but passengers. True, but what do the passengers care? Horse is ready. Sam isn't. You got my horse, now why don't you get out of here? Sam, when we rode in here and let you take a look at us, that minute, you hear they're gonna join up with us, or? Die. I can't do you no good. Of course you can, Sam. You always thought fast when things got rough. Yeah, it'd make a nice, safe place to hold up. After we got what we're after. Oh. Uh, my kid don't know what I used to be. I don't get excited, Sam. Or he's a little emotional. He didn't really mean what he said. Did you, Mark? No. Very fond of you, Sam. You were an honest outlaw back in the old days. I could trust you. And somehow I... I feel that I can trust you now. Don't worry. I won't tell anyone about you. No, Sam, you won't.
won't do any good. <laughs> Who was he? Oh. My father. Well, he was already dead when I got here. There's somebody else who came from behind. You better look after her. You gonna shoot us too? Story? You ain't believing him, are you, Mr. Wilson? I'm holding for trial, son. He ought to hang. That's for a jury to decide. He didn't wait for a jury before killing Paul. You can take your mother home, boy. <laughs> We're going home, Ma. Yes. Home. Look, Sheriff, I'm I'm just a working trail boy. I got a herd blocked up in the hills, two hours right north of here. I believe it. You'd be a fool to. Lie about anything as easy to check on as that. Of course. The only reason I came into Mesa was to see if there was another pass through the hills. That's one reason. Sam Burton could be another. Well, no. If I really killed him, would we be bringing his family into town? I don't know. Ain't paid to know. Well, you might try finding out. Jury, well. When? Well, since the circuit court judge gets here. How soon will that be? It's holding court up in Anaconda right now. That's the county seat. All right. How soon will he be here? Well, could be a week, maybe a month. A month? I'd lose the herd. You lose a my sight more than that if the jury finds you guilty. But you won't find it so bad. Sure. You believe I'm a trail bush. Why don't you at least try believing that maybe I didn't kill Burton? Two witnesses, for one thing. For another, ten years ago, Sam Burton was an outlaw. Only his wife and me know that. Nobody else, not even his son. What's that got to do with me? You're a trail boss now. Can you prove to me what you were ten years ago and where? Sure, in time. You're going to have the time. Could you at least know if I'm a man? You'll say it's uh, two hours right north? Sure. I'll send a man in the morning. Rowdy? What's the matter? You got a face as long as a brood mare's tail. Mr. Fever's been gone all night. He should have found his after and come back by now. Well, yeah, but... Look, Roddy, Mesa's a town, ain't it? Yeah. And a town's full of people, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, taking one thing with another kind of stands to reason half of them people will be women. Yeah. And quit worrying. through the hills. Oh, yeah? What's the matter with you? Oh, Mr. Paver ain't back yet. Well, you can just catch up with us. Let's get that herd moving. Well, we're not going to move out till he gets back. Look, Rowdy, Mr. Favor's a... Well, I mean, Mesa's a town. I know. Mesa's a town, and it's got people in it, and half of them are women. <laughs> What did I say? Well, nothing. Only you said it twice. Except first time I said it. Mr. Wishbone, look out there.
Morning. 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 Dan Dooley's the name. Don't ever sleep in a live stable if you can help it. Well, we'll make a real effort. A sir named uh, Rowdy Yates around? Uh, me. Your boss is in jail. For what? Murder. Murder? Mr. Favors in jail! What for? Murder! <laughs> I'm going in there alone. Oh, you did. You men are going to stay with the herd, understand? I didn't stand with the herd. I didn't put Ben in charge. Maybe you better tell him. You men are fired, all of you. How do you can't keep us out here, Miss Favor, in jail, charged with murder? I say you're fired. Well, ain't no use hanging around a place where we ain't being paid to hang around. Let's go to town. <laughs> That rival, it might go off. It sure will if you try anything. I want to talk to one of your passengers. Right after us till we get to Mesa. I'll talk to that passenger here. Sorry, mister. <laughs> Inside. The driver's believing a little bit, but. Where's Priest? Nobody inside. He's got to be. Well, I'm not a priest. I can prove it. Well, I wouldn't doubt him at it. Well, you watch your language. You? I I'm a clerk at the Ananda Hotel. I've been a clerk all my life, ever since I've been old I enough. I can vouch from Mr. Hooper. Yes. He's already booked me a room. And what are you? The name's Owens. As for what I am, well, I'm generally a bit shy about it. But as things are, do you mind if I get something out of it? Go ahead. Fifty-two pieces of paper. Fascinating piece, though. Come away. Eddie, go get your horse. Morris. You find anything up there? Nothing. Owens, remind me the next time we meet not to engage you in a friendly game of cards. I don't play a friendly game of cards. Listen here, Sheriff. Now, we don't plan going up against the law. But we don't plan on tearing down this place rock by rock. But we will if you don't let Mr. Favor go. Understand? Sir?
I thought I left you in charge of the herd. Well, Benton's in charge. But didn't leave Ben in charge. Why aren't you over the herd? We've been fired. Fired? By who? Roddy. Well, I told them I was coming in here alone, and they wouldn't listen to me. So I fired them all. Well, you ain't never gonna get to be trail boss unless you uh, learn how to fire a man so he stays fired. Get him back to the drive. I'll catch you. Look, we're not gonna let you sit in this jail just because some small town sheriff made a mistake. Oh, no. He didn't make no mistake. Well, you didn't kill anybody. Did you? No, of course I didn't kill nobody. But there's evidence. Two witnesses. Sheriff! Stagecoach has been held up. Joe Wendell's wounded pretty good. We know what you decided to do about tearing down the jail. Are you bad? Are you all right? Well, well, there were these ten men, see? Three. And, and they were hollering, and they were shooting. One shot was fired. They threatened to rob us, and murder us, and, and worse. All we're looking for was a priest. Did they take anything? We, uh, we scared them off. They searched the luggage and took nothing. Sheriff? Sure. How you feel, Joe? Not too bad. Recognize any of the men? Recognize one of the horses. A sorrow with a spot on his head and a strip on his nose. That sounds like it was Sam Burton's. I don't know whether that's good for you or bad. We got better than a half a hundred horses in the Bermuda. I sure wouldn't to steal one. I, uh, I think you and me just ride out to Burton Ranch. Now that they've had a chance to cool off a bit, maybe Mrs. Burton and the boy will remember more than a second. I sure hope so. How are you, Dan? Hi, Father Owen. I'm in a bit of a hurry. The wagon's all loaded and ready. Why, you are in our mighty hurry. Oh, is that blasphemy, Father? I think you'll get by, and I am in a hurry. Well, then I won't be keeping you. Except, how safe are you going to be? Transporting the building equipment, the stained glass for the church, and, and all that money to build it all the way to Anaconda, and... I, and don't try telling me the Lord will look after you. I hope he will, and I'm trying to make it a little easy for him. Bye, Dad. Goodbye, Father. There you are. There you are. Off you go, Father. <laughs> That's the horse we found in the barn when we got back. Explain. Explain why the outlaws stopped here. Yeah. His friends. We don't know that, son. Well, they took Pa's horse and left him behind so Pa wouldn't follow him. The man's a trail horse, Hal. The man's a murderer. Mrs. Burton. The holding up of the stagecoach and the swapping of the horses creates considerable doubt as to Mr. Favor's guilt. Not in my mind. Now, oh, he's got a herd of 3,000 head he's taken north. I wouldn't feel right holding him in Mesa for a month. You mean you're going to let him go? We're following a herd along toward Anaconda, where he can get a hearing before Circuit Judge Johnson. Everybody's worrying about him. Nobody's remembering Paul. You want to see a man hanged, even if he ain't the one who killed your father? He is. Mrs. Burton, you'll have to go along with us, unless you want to drop the charges against him. No! Please go in my wagon, Mrs. Burton. I'll send Billy out to take over the ranch. Well, nothing seems to matter much anymore. 
We'll do as you say, Sheriff. <laughs> up ahead. It's kind of deep, though. I figure if we go down to where it widens out, we'll lose a couple hours. Uh, I'll take a look at it. Just a favor. I can't let you out of my sight. Well, come on with me, then. In a buggy? Sure, if I'm going to Anaconda with you, fortunately, the herd's going in the same direction, so while I'm still with it, I'm trail boss. Got my job to do. So have I. Who's your best hand, Mr. Favor? Roddy here. Trust him. When anything happens to me, he takes over. Take over. Young man. Yeah? The law says that a deputy or a sheriff has to keep an accused man always on the guard. Now, I'm a little long in the tooth and him in the leg to go galloping off after Longhorns. That's why I'm going to deputize you to watch out for Mr. Favor there. Deputize me? Oh, no, no, no. He's the boss, huh? He's also got a serious charge hanging over his head, and somebody has to keep an eye on him at all times. No, Sheriff, you, you better get yourself another boy. All right, in that case, go get him. Tell him I'm taking him back to Mesa to with the circuit judge, no matter how long it takes. Heck, I'll make a good deputy, sir. Raise your right hand. You swear to perform the duties and obligations of a deputy sheriff, to keep constant watch over the prisoner assigned to you, and deliver him to the duly constituted authorities in Anaconda, say how God. Yeah, I sure. Say I do. Hmm? Oh, I do. I do. Go get him. Come on. Mr. Wilson, you, you just deputized one of his own men. We've well, been riding with 25 of his own men. You'll never get to Anaconda. If Mr. Favor wants to, Hal, not only he won't get to Anaconda, you and I won't either. Sheriff, witnesses were all in his hands. You did that deliberate. That's right. Well, it sounds like you believe he's innocent. What I believe don't go in a court of law, but I do believe so. See how his men respect him? I also seen him kill my father. Keep your voice down. Let her sleep. Sleep and she'll forget. I ain't gonna forget. Tell him to slow down the herd. I don't want him bunching up here. Oh, sure. Hey, Quint. I told you to do it. Well, I can't do that, boss. Well, that was an order. Yeah, well, as a, as a cowhand, I'd have to obey that order, but as a deputy sheriff, I can't do it. Quince, why don't you ride back and tell him to slow up the herd, huh? Tonight, Mr. Favor. Well, Mr. Favor, haven't got but half. Well, what do you have tonight, Mr. Deputy? Stew or stew? Yeah, 
Let's see. Uh, I believe I'll have Steve. Yeah, I'll spot. Well, thanks. Now, you sit here and get that tin stuff you're shiny. I'm gonna go get something to eat. Some idiot come along and took mine. Oh, really? You uh, better make that into one. Now I'm just going over to the buggy that talked to the boy. You can stay here and watch. Kill your father. You can answer that better than me. The answer is I did. You're a trail boss. You got a lot of men working for you. A big herd to look after. You ride a horse good. You do your job. So why couldn't you let my father alone? I don't want to live as long as you keep on living. As long as I keep remembering that gun in your hand and paw dead at your feet. favor. Yes, ma'am. I heard you talking to Hal. I don't know what to think. Sam's dead. But what I thought I saw doesn't fit with what I see now. I call you a murderer. I can't blame you, Mrs. Burton. Well, that's not important. What is... Mr. Favor, do you know what... what Sam was before we settled at Mesa? The sheriff told me. Well... No matter how mad Hal makes you, you won't tell him about his father. No, of course not. He'll get over it. I'm sure he will. Playing solitaire at that. I hardly expected to see you again. Well, our um, information was wrong. The priest wasn't coming by stagecoach. Stained glass window here, Gaff. Stealing church supplies. Your information wasn't wrong. There was no priest on that age, coach. I was on it, coach. Are you a priest? I am. Well, now, what do you know? A lion priest. Oh, no. I never denied I was one. You never asked me. Well, my name is Gaff. I'm Father Owens. Happy to know you. I, uh, got a strong boss, Gaff. I'm very happy to know you. Eddie, give more of your hand. Aren't you a little too handy with cards, Father? It amuses the children. Well, under the circumstances, it amuses me, too, now that we've caught up with you. This thing's locked. Naturally. The key, Father. I don't have the key with me. You wouldn't want me to get nasty. The key's an anaconda. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. You wouldn't lie. So the key's an anaconda. Shoot the lock off. Hey, we've got 
the one we want. I've not mentioned this before, Mr. Favor. I've had no time to think. But now, well, I must go on alone. Why? Well, those men took the strong box from my wagon, but the money they were after wasn't in it. I still have it. Well, that seems to me like the best news we've had all day, Father. By now they know. They'll be back. No, oh, we've got 25 men against their three. Do you have 25 murderers? Father, we've run across the time before. We know how to handle them. Well. I need some sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Good, real good. Mr. Favor, a man died today because of the money I'm carrying. I keep wondering. Maybe I should have given them the money. Well, now, was it yours to give for? Thank you. Good night. Night. Say. I'm going to sleep. Yeah? Right around that boat there. Yeah? You gonna at least let me sleep in peace? Yeah. Thank you. Where the money is. Surrounded by two, three thousand head of cattle and a pack of ignorant cowhands. We going after it. Money's a beautiful thing, Eddie. The dead men will get any place you're out of spending it. Gaff. There's a man to a white company. Yeah. Man, we could perhaps sell. Uh, would buy. The priest would. Force him into a choice between a man's dad and the money. He'd have no choice. with a herd. How much time would we lose? Anaconda's about 12 miles west of the trail, about three days. Mm. Now, if we took Father Owen's wagon right now and left for Anaconda, we'd be there by morning. That's right, but how about those aspers that are after the Father's money? They wouldn't know the wagon was gone from the herd until morning. How about it, Father? You game? That's golf's to favor. I'm going with you. I won't need you for this, Roddy. Well, I sort of took an oath on this, and well, you got to clear yourself. Besides, you were the one who said. Father, will you tell the burdens we'll be even right away? All right. Grins, you help uh, hitch up the horses. Pete, you keep moving as fast as you can. Wait a minute, boss. 
You have to go through with this. Just do what I tell you. I'll catch up with you sooner or later. And what am I supposed to do? Just keep on cooking while they're trying you for your life? That's right. All right. But I'm not guaranteeing the quality of it. Well, I don't guarantee the hands will ever know the difference. I'll see which bone. Stop and show the word for him, you know, wishbone. Oh, that remark was entirely uncalled for, Pete Nolan. Mr. Favor's a very reasonable man. Except, of course, when he gets stubborn. This is a little bit too rocky. Wagon could bust a wheel on him. We'll have to clear him out. Anything wrong? It's too rocky for the wagon. We'll have to clear some out. You can use another pair of hands. Thanks, Rolly. Mr. Faber. There's something I've got to say to you now, before we get to Anaconda. Yes, sir? I'm not going to testify against you. Whatever you think is right. I think testifying against you would be wrong. You're not a killer, Mr. Faber. I've seen enough of those. All those years when Sam was what he was. What about your son? Oh, Hal's a good boy. He'll listen to me once you've gone. And he doesn't have to remember seeing you and Sam together. I hope so. No wonder he's such a good boy. Got such a good mother. Just about does it. Should we get going? The boy's gone. Couldn't have gone far. He was here just a minute ago. Can't leave without him. No sign of the boy, or his rifle. I can't understand why he ran away or where. He's after you if that's a kid, boss. Oh, no. thanks, son. Found our friends if you have pointed them out. Now suppose we go join them, huh? I suggest you drop those guns. If 
you don't want him to die. No, madam. Please stay where you are. Hey, let the boy go to his mother. That's my father's. It was your father's. I despise domestic scenes. Shall we end this one quickly? Well, Father, we meet a third time, and a final one. You will kindly tell me where that money is, at once. Well, it's here somewhere. All right, go collect their guns. Now, the rest of you. I want everything in that wagon unloaded and open. If you force us to do it, we'll have to kill you first. Matter that window too heavy. Tend to have that money, Father. Now, I realize quite well you would rather die before you turn over church funds to me. But would you let others die? They'll have to kill us all sooner or later anyway. Mr. Favor may be right. But if he's wrong, do you want to take that chance? The money isn't mine. All right. We'll be first, Father. The boy or his mother? The boy, then. All right. No! Don't tell him, Father. They wouldn't have found you if I hadn't been shooting Miss Favor. I'm sorry, Mr. Favor. True repentance. Well, Father. I'll tell you where the money is. Well, you restore my faith, Father. Where is it? <laughs> Mr. Faber, I regret you putting your hands on me. Further, I have no intention of being led to law like a sheep to a slaughter pen. You'll have to kill me yourself. Either you or the good father there. Well, I didn't think either of you would. So if you'll all excuse me. Wait a minute, get. Sheriff Wilson deputized me. 
I'll kill you. In cold blood? Yeah. All I have to do is remember that you're the one who killed Burton. Well, I'll leave you to your memory. Money safe now, but where is it? In the simplest of all places. The one place cunning men like these would never think of looking. I could. Yeah. Well, now, let's see how good you are as a drover. You can ride back a drag the next three days. See anything yet, Ray? No, not a thing, Jim. Oh, I'm sure getting anxious. Guess we all are. Yeah, you bet. some sounds pretty soon, shouldn't we? Yeah, this grass wouldn't be a herd of goats. Yeah, it looks like the goats have already been here. Drought. Well, it won't make any difference. We'll have them in the shipping pen by nightfall. We hope. Oh, we're not there yet. Oh. We're getting real close, Mr. Wishbone. Ah, uh, nothing but fences. I sure couldn't live in a country like this, all fenced in. I'll be glad to get that tent, though. Did you excite it? Well, I'm saving up. Me too. I haven't had a cup of water for two days. I want to be real good thirsty. Get out! You can smell Sedalia even if you can't. What are you planning on doing first, Ralph? Well, I'll tell you, Teddy. After I get myself a bath, a real tub with hot water, a shaved haircut, and all them trimming, I'm gonna order myself some of the finest city clothes you ever saw. If you know anybody in say they sure ain't gonna hardly know you. <laughs> well, that's right. Then I'm gonna get myself a real expensive Del Michael's dinner. What about liquor? I can just see all those pretty girls. Ooh, wait till I get my hand. <laughs> What is it? Well, look at it. It's a fire, isn't it? Oh, yeah. That's smoke. That's smoke from a boiler. That's a railroad. That's a dam. Yeah, that's Look, boss, we made it. Looks a long ways off to me. Yeah, well, we got nothing to worry about now. Oh, no. Nothing except fences, grass, and water, and a place to hold them. And the buyers, the inspectors, the mark price, freight costs, the mood of the world. In the state of million housewives' digestion. Well, take it easy, will you? It'll be all right. I'll take it easy when I got the money in hand and the beef out of my sight. Sidelia! No more gunshots, any of you. You want to go chasing steers all over the state of Missouri? Just calm down until you get them in the pens in Sedalia. You'll have plenty of time to celebrate then. You promise that, Mr. Favor? Now, you ain't gonna be like some of these bosses. Hold back most of man's money so as he can't go to town and blow off steam. Well, I did sort of hope that I was boss and grown man. You'll get your pay when the job's done. Till then, you're still working, so get them moving. Hey, yeah. Still looks good, though, don't it? I'd rather see it closer, too. You two take them on to Noonan, then hold them there. I'll go ahead and contact the buyers, let them know coming. Right.
It's civilian, ain't it? I'm outside with 3,000 head of prime beef. Mr. Faber. Yeah, what's the matter with all you people? Since when ain't a new herd good news in Sedalia? Since two days ago when the panic started. Panic? Haven't you heard? The biggest bank in New York and under. Bottoms dropped out of everything. Nobody's doing a thing. Things closing up all over. No cash, no credit, no buyers for cattle. The price is going down, huh? All the way down to zero. No buyers at all. Can't be. Somebody's got to be buying cattle. Nobody's got any money to buy. Anybody's got any cash, he's hanging on to it. Well, the banks are still open. Won't lend a cent. But you come all the way from Texas. I know, Mr. Faber. But you're not the only one. It's the same all up and down the line. Abilene, Dodge. It's tough luck. I'd have been in the same boat myself, only I got here two weeks ago. Well, just what am I supposed to do with this herd? I don't know. If you're lucky, maybe you can sell them tallow. A couple of dollars a head. Tallow? This is prime beef. Seems nobody's eating prime beef these days. At least no call for it. This can't last forever. Maybe not. Sure, there's been panics before. They don't last. A few days and all flows over. Maybe. Well, people get the continents back. Things can stand still. Got to live, to eat, and they start buying again. Sure, but when? Well, we'll just wait it out. Two days, we get the most. People calm down. Buyers will show up. Yeah, we'll just uh, hold the herd outside of town for a while. Wait it out. Won't do any harm to try eggs. You'll need grass, Mr. Favor. That'll be hard to find. That's right. Range around here is scarce. It's all burned up. I tried to fatten my herd up a little before selling them. I had to go clear over to Baxter Springs before I could find enough. There ain't nothing at all closer than that. Well, there, there is Cardwell Place. It's about the only good grass near Sedalia. Yeah, but that's not open range. It's down in the valley. It's fenced. We'll pay for grazing fees for a few days. Can't be much. Where's this Cardwell? Well, this is Widow Emma Cardwell you'll have to talk to. The road west, you'll look by the grass. Thanks. Finished already, Garcia? Mrs. Cardwell? Oh. I'm sorry. That's all right. Who are you? My name's Favor. Favor? You're not from around here. No, I just come up from Texas. That's what I thought. And you're a drover, too, from the smell of you. Oh, I, uh, just brought a herd up the trail. I need to graze them, and I'd like to hire pasturage from you. We won't cause you any trouble. We'll keep down by the creek. I wouldn't bother you in the first place. Normally, we'd just throw them in the pen and forget about them. But uh, with this panic on, there's no buyers, and I'll have to wait for a few days. You're asking me to do you a kindness. I'm, I'm offering you a business proposition. You got grass, I need it. I'm willing to pay for it. How much? Well, any reasonable price. I'll leave that up to you, ma'am. You said a few days. How long would you want to stay, mister? Well, I couldn't say exactly, but uh, I'd say a week at the outside. How many head of cattle do you have? Roughly 3,000. Maybe a few more. 
And the price will be 25 cents per head per week. Per week? That's way too much, man. Then find your grass someplace else, Mr. Fave. But there isn't any place else. Unless because of the panic you're just taking advantage of me. I didn't ask you to come here. You wanted my terms, I gave them to you. Now take it or leave it. All right, I'll take it for a week. We'll put it on paper. You might. As of this date, I promise to pay Emma Cardwell a grazing fee of 25 cents per week for each of 3,000 head of cattle, payable before said cattle leave the premises. Date it and sign it. Garcia will give you a hand. This is good. Well, you drive a hard bargain, but you show a sense of business. Something uh, puzzles me. What? Well, that grass hasn't been grazed in quite a while. How come you let it go to waste? Why don't you use it to raise your own stock? I don't think that's any of your business. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, look at Scarlett getting all sharp up. I don't aim to waste no time before I belly up the bar. What are you doing there, Chip? Well, I'm figuring out how much I got coming. I think I got enough to go back east, New York. Hey, maybe it's going to help you in this favor. Yeah. We'll see him out this world. Yeah, well, knowing you, you won't get past the first Monty table that dough year. Here comes Mr. Favor. Boss. Where are the buyers, boss? Hey, they're probably coming out supper like, huh? Yeah, and carriages probably, huh? Something wrong? I'll give it to you straight. Country's in panic. No buyers, no market, no sale. You mean we can't sell the herd? No money for us? We ain't going to town. I'd blow off some steam. That's it. When do we go? I don't know. We'll just have to hold the herd a while until it blows over and we can get a decent price for the feed. I found some grass and hired the ground. It's close enough to town, all right, but I got no money to give you. So you promised us, Mr. Favor. And you'll get it when I get it. Nothing I can do about it. Well, there's something I can do about it. I can quit. We signed on to go to Sedalia. This is Sedalia, and we're through. You free to go any time? Only question is, do you want to go empty-handed, or do you want to wait until I can get you some money? You got a pretty good argument there. Well, anyway, we agreed to sign on with Mr. Favor till the end of the trail. That means until the herd is sold, what? Sure, we'll stay, Mr. Favor. How long do you figure it'll be, Mr. Favor? I just don't know. I hope no more than a week, but I can't promise anything. Well, let's hit him out. Follow me in. Always something. I was sort of hoping that this time it might be different. Always something. Mr. Favor, not much change in two days. And I could see. Well, anyway, you got grass. Surprise me. You're the first old lamb we'll ever lease to. No doubt that. She drives a hard bargain. She got something against Kilman? I don't know. 
Her husband's one of them that started the business here. Made Sedalia's shipping point. He helped get the pens built. And then he sort of lost out. I get he got the blues. Killed himself. You must have left her well off enough. She hadn't done anything with the land. Until now. She charging you steep? More than enough. I can't stay there long. Maybe you ought to think about wintering those cattle. Take them out on the range, west or north. Sell them in the spring, all fattened up. Prices ought to be back by then. Oh, I got a lot of owners back in Texas waiting for the money. I got notes coming due in October. Same around here. They figured they'd have the money back by then. Say, uh, what you think you gotta get out, I heard? Mm, at least $25 a head. Hey, you better think about winter. They don't get money. I don't know what they're gonna do. A lot of places gonna foreclose this winter. Well, I'll see you. Then what are we gonna do? I don't know. Doesn't seem like anything we can do. Well, what about driving them to another town, Abilene or Ellsworth? And maybe east to St. Louis. It's the same all over. The just dropped right down to the floor. It's pretty old blues to me. That don't sound like you. Whether or kettle or horse or something, you can get your hands into. Do something about it. Spank and money. I don't know. It's beyond me. People just get over the darn panic. Well, just one buyer show up. That's all it'd take. Which one? What are you up to? Never mind. Favor tell you you'd go in the I don't need his. His own or yours. Now just keep your mouth shut. You went out on us? Well, what if I am? I came to Sedalia. That's all I bargained for. Listen, you know Mr. Favor depends on you more than does anybody else. Now, who he depends on is his affair. And where I go and when is mine. Now, you wait a minute. Wait, 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 come one step nearer. I'm not going to let you go until you go over and talk it over with Mr. Favor. Oh, I guess you're right. Pete, you know how specially funny you are, I am. Well, so you'll know how much I hate to do this. Wishbone hitting you over the head and deserting? It's right when we need every man the most. This lump on my head didn't go from a seat. There ought to be some kind of mistake. There ain't no mistake. He just blew the coop. And well, that's money. So somebody else do the cooking. You live without him. Yeah, but it won't be the same. All of us wishbone. It's not true, Mr. Wright. He wouldn't do it, no. I'll just forget, will you, Mushy? Well, I can't forget, Mr. Nolan. Sure, I wonder where he is. What he's doing. <laughs> Smith, I see by the time in your luggage you're going to sell you. Oh, yes, yes, I am. So am I. It's a coincidence, isn't it? I uh, haven't seen you on the train before, have I? Well, no, I just got on the last station. Had to stop off before day to on a little business. I didn't get your name. Oh, Draper. I do, Mr. Draper. Uh, what business would you be in? I work for the government. I had to thought maybe you'd be in the kind of business. Oh. Is that your line? Yes, it is. A cattle buyer, that's what I am. You represent one of the biggest interest techies. That's all. Come out to check the stock in Sedalia. You planning to buy? Well, I don't just check them for my health, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, this panic hasn't affected your business then. Uh, panic? What panic? Well, pure and utter nonsense. People gotta eat, don't 
That's why I always say, pay brother eating. That means beef, panic or no panic. Of course, I might get a little better price that way. <laughs> no, I mean to pay every cent that cattle's worth. I see. Uh, you got any friends, Sedalia, that are in beef? You might uh, put them on to me. J. Douglas Smith. Probably be staying at the drover house. Hmm. Well, I'd be glad to. Well, I guess we have time to have a cigar before we get to town. Hmm? Well, thank you very much. Don't mind if I do. Uh -huh. I'd hear somebody. <clears throat> Don't say, Mr. Smith. Oh, yes, indeed. People got to eat, don't they? That's what I always say. So if you find me a good herd, two, three thousand, I'll go thirty-five dollars ahead and glad you. Uh, who'd you say your interests were back east, Mr. Smith? Uh, Nolan and Yates. Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, all over. You heard of them, of course. Oh, of course. Well, now, Mr. Smith, there's a shortage of real good beef right now, but it just might be that we'll be able to get our hands on some. But why don't you just sit tight and... Let us see what we can do. Well, fine, gentlemen. Uh, you'll be able to reach me at the over house. Uh, if it don't take too long, that is. Because I might be able to find what I want in Abilene or beyond. Oh, no, no. It won't take long. Uh, we'll contact you this afternoon, no later. Now, you just sit tight. Fine, gentlemen. Thank you. Oh, it's a cash deal, you know. Say, why didn't you tell him about the favor herd? Don't be a fool. He's willing to pay $35 a hit. Favors willing to take 25 maybe even less by now. Is there any reason why we shouldn't make a profit of $10? After all, it's perfectly legitimate. We brought the two parties together. That ought to be worth something. Oh, but he wants cash. We're going to have to raise some cash. Yeah, but where? Well, I've got a little in the bank. You have two, no doubt. And then there's uh, Burke and Wilson. And you'll think of some others. Oh, come on. We haven't got all day. Say, where'd this Smith come from, anyway? Why, Nolan and Yates, of course. You heard him. Now get going. I beg your pardon. I'm looking for the secretary. Well, that's me. My name is Walters. Mine's Draper. I represent the government. Looking for beef. A buyer for the government? That's right. I've been advised as a herd 3,000 head. You'd hit Sedalia right about now. Well, you must mean the give favor drive. So they've arrived. Well, take me to the four-stranded trail boss. Well, what makes you think he's poor and stranded? You know the answer to that as well as I do, Mr. Walters. Panic, banks closing, live buyers. Wrong again, Mr. Draper. Business may not be humming as usual, but Sedalia's not out of buyers yet. You mean Mr. Favor's been approached by another buyer? That's probably a speculator trying to take advantage of the panic. Well, where is Mr. Favor's camp? I'm prepared to make him a fair bid. Are you prepared to bid against an offer of $35 a head cash? I'm afraid not. I didn't think so. I'm afraid you're out of luck, Mr. Draper. Did you say Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith, of Nolan and Yates. Uh, I want 25. Uh, 20 is as high as we can go. And take my advice, Mr. Faber, it's the only offer you're likely to get. Now, here's $1,000 just to bind the deal. The rest tomorrow when we take possession. Fine, good. You won't regret this, Mr. Favor. You'll be the only trail boss that comes out so well. See you in the morning. I guess that's all that's left to do. Take much of a profit for the owners, but at least it's a profit, and then it'll get paid. Well, you look who's here. Mr. Wishbone, I knew you'd be back. You didn't know nothing of the kind. I thought I saw him tie up with the hitch wrap, but I didn't think I could believe my eyes. Oh, it's him all right. The little rat that thought the ship was going to sink. Now, oh, Pete Nolan, you got no call calling me names like that. You're just a sore head. You split my scalp and then you got the nerve to call me a sore head. Ah, Pete, you're making a mountain out of a little old lump. While well, I hit you on the hardest part of your head and put a nice soothing compress on it, ease the misery. Uh, hi, Mr. Favor. Everybody? You have got something, maybe? Uh, I thought as long as I come this far, I'd stop in and make your last supper. Last supper? How'd you know it was gonna be our last supper? Or maybe you got into the fact that we're selling the herd? Oh, somebody buying the herd? Well, that's fine, isn't it? That's mighty fine. Where you been? What are you up to in those clothes? Uh, up to in these clothes? Yeah, up to in those clothes. <sighs> well, Mr. Favor, 
Yeah? I've got a confession to make. I should think you would. Well, I knew the fix you were in. Well, the fix we were all in. Go on. So I tried to help you. Why, bless you, Wish. And just how did you try and help us? And how didn't it work out? Well, only because my uncle-in-law in Sedalia... Oh, I never told you about him, did I? Uh, well, he didn't... Didn't, uh... Didn't what? Didn't like my looks. Wouldn't speak to me. As a matter of fact, he wouldn't even recognize me. And as another matter of fact, he had me thrown out of his presence. And as a last matter of fact, he, I snuck back in camp and can't say I helped one solitary thing. Uh, any questions? Worst bone, you're a flat-mouthed liar. You smell that money that you ran out on. Oh, I didn't hear one word about it. But I'm mighty glad for everybody. Uh, get a nice price, did you? I'm enough to pay the wages you got coming, if any now. Well, don't worry about that. How much did you get? Twenty ahead. Twenty dollars? Why, those thieves... You didn't know anything about it. Wait a minute. What do you know about this? Uh, nothing. Uh, a thing. I got to get the cooking done. But you should have held out for more. Twenty dollars isn't enough. It's enough for us. How about it, Mr. Faber? All right. My book, we'll count it out. But until we get the herd turned over tomorrow, you can't go in town. Hey, funny, darn it. Yeah. I like Mushy's cooking this morning better. You two complaining about the food after all the guzzling you've done these months? Maybe I just never spoke up before. Honey, a second, everybody. No, thank you. Hey, look it. Ain't that our buyer? Mr. Faber? You're getting early, ain't you? You said morning. I did come for the herd. I want my money back. This is Marshal Thorpe of Sedalia. If you don't hand it over, he'll throw you in jail. What? You made a deal. You tried to pull a swindle on me, send that fake cattle buyer to town. Are you talking about? Mr. Smith, or whatever his name is, that's what I'm talking about. $35 a head for his big interest back east, that's what I'm talking about. But he's not registered at the hotel, and when we wired back east, we found that his big interest, Nolan and Yates, don't exist. Wait a minute. What did this Mr. Smith look like? Whiskery old character. I should have known from his looks as a common criminal. Wishbone? Yeah? But that's him! That's the man! I told you, Marshal. Well, Mr. Favor didn't have anything to do with this. It was all my own idea. You can throw me in jail if you have to. But uh, he didn't have anything to do with it. Nothing did. I don't believe you. Arrest him, Marshal. So now, all you want your money back, isn't that? What? Well, there's no use throwing anybody in jail. He was just trying to help his boss out of a hole. You weren't so mighty innocent, Mr. Secretary. You were pretty quick to recognize a $15 head profit. I want my money back. Every cent of it. You'll get it. It's not all there. Go here for me. Thanks, Mr. Faber. Just don't let any of your men try anything like that again. I might have to do something about it. Wishbone? I know. I'm sorry. I thought it'd work. I sure didn't think it'd turn out like this. I didn't know they were going to call it a swindle. Sorry I had to hit you, Pete. What? Well, you couldn't hit hard enough to hurt anybody. And I'm sorry you all had to give money back. Uh, wishbone about a second, sir. I'd like some. Yeah, me too. I'm hungry. I haven't had any decent food since you left, Wish. Yeah, it'd be good to have real cooking again. Well, right over here. What now? We can't stay here. We're causing as money we ain't got. We'll move out in the morning. Well, yeah, where to? Northwest Nebraska, find some range we can winter among. It's the only thing, us we're going to buy her on the way. 
I don't know how the men are going to take to that, whether they go along or not. Give my my use and let them go. We'll have to keep enough to hold the herd. I think we'll have that. Yeah, well, what about Miss Carl? Well, you got to pay her, too. She'll have to do an IOU, too. <laughs> Nothing else would do. Don't crowd in at the gate. All right. Well, I ought to take down to that fence. Now, I don't want to have to pay damages when the tough we already are. Special Thorpe from Sedalia. And Mrs. Cardwell's man. Mr. Favor, I'm sorry. You'll have to move hers back. Why? Unless you're prepared to pay what you owe Mrs. Cardwell. Of course, I can't pay cash right now. Made up an IOU. Oh, it's just gonna drop by the house. Won't do. I've got an injunction. Court order. She wants her money in cash before you move one head off her land. You and every man here will be in contempt court. Liable for stiff fine and jail sentence if you move them. You want to risk that? Move them back! <laughs> Talk with Mrs. Cardwell. Let Rowdy know. And you know why. And you knew it from the beginning. You signed an agreement. So it was just a trap. You knew I couldn't sell the herd. You also agreed not to move them until you paid. Well, I made out an IOU. I'm taking the herd out to open range and winter them. When I sell them in the spring, you'll get your money. With interest. I'll get it now. How? I'll take the cattle off your hands. You'll buy them? How much? Ten dollars a head. Ten? I could have said less. I got men out there. I gotta pay them. Ten dollars will pay them. I'd sell them almost as much for tallow. You'd have to move them first. You all sewed up. And you knew it from the start. Why? It's my business. Well, it's my business now. What is it anyway? Your husband? Blame an old cattleman for his death, huh? It was cattleman that did it. Swindled him, took away his life, work, everything he valued, loved. So you're blaming us who didn't even know him? No, there's more. You belong to a breed of men. You come tearing into town like a bunch of maniacs. Shooting, drinking, killing. I had a son. And you won't have much to celebrate with this time. Ten dollars a head, take it or leave it. Well, I won't take it. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna fight you, lady. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Fever. I was only doing my duty. She's a strange old woman. Just the same, don't try taking him out. What are we gonna do? We'll take him out. Night in the dark. Maybe mean a fight. Yeah, I know. We won't have the law on our side this time. Oh, may God I owe use. Any man who doesn't want to ride tonight is free to leave. No hard feeling. Colin? I owe you don't buy no fun in town. Tonight, then.
getting ready to push him through. Good. You didn't show movement before we started you. No. What about the gate, though? We got no time to fool with the gate. You men get to work on that fence. Keep it as quiet as you can. Right. Tell them not to push the cows too hard. We don't want them filling up a racket. You ready up here? What do we do, boss? We'll go on. I wanted you, trail boss. My men will have to fire. See how many of them there are. I warned you, Mr. Faber. All right, you win. Now you're under arrest, all of you. Look, he's hurt. We gotta get him someplace where we can do him for good. Let's get him up to the house. Mr. Cridewells? Yeah, no place else. Easy. Let's go. Easy. Bring him in here. I don't want your kind around. Get out of the way, Mrs. Cardwell. Too bad. Ooh, what's the matter? Maybe it was a fall off the horse. He's young, isn't he? Well, how bad is it? I just don't know. The boat's gotta come out of there. Well, yeah, I can do that. I'll get some water. Excuse me. Who's got my doctor bag? Here you are, we go. In? No, you can stay here. But there'll have to be a charge. So don't try to leave. My men will stay watch. I thought you people wanted trailers in Sedalia. We do. Not everybody's like Emma. The merchants at home were praying you'd sell your herd because they need your business. Marshal, what do you think we'll get? Well, I think I can arrange with the judge to let you all off with fines, providing your man there don't die, and that ain't likely. What are we going to pay them fines with? Well, that's up to you. I'll do all I can. Just don't try to get away again. Come on. Mr. Favor, we've been talking to some of us. And, well, 
Well, we just figure you're licked. Now, we was willing to stick around as long as there's anything we can do. You want to make a run for it? No, sir. No, we don't. We just like to go in town and pay our fines and be done with it. How many times have I got to tell you I ain't got the money? Now, you can sell to Miss Cardwell. For $10 a hit, that'd make our pay. Pay our fines, too. What about the owners? Well, I'm sorry about you and your reputation. Well, I'm not about to give up yet. But... Say our favor. Found this man snooping around the herd looking at the cow. Who are you, mister? My name is Draper, Mr. Favor. I represent the government. I'm buying beef for the army. You a buyer? Oh, how do you do, Mr. Smith? Well, just call me Wishbone. Wishbone? You said you were buying cattle, mister? Oh, yes, for the Missouri River forts, uh, Lemworth and Atchison. The army needs quite a bit right now. They're moving the Pawnee tribe south to Indian Territory and have to be fed. How much do you need? Well, I'll take all you have. At what price? I was authorized before the panic to offer $33 a head for prime beef. Now, I understand you've had a higher offer, but that's the best I can do. You said before the panic, what's the price now? Well, my authorization has never been changed. Perhaps the government wants to keep the price up. Anyway, that's my offer. Mr. Draper, I accept. There's uh, just one thing, though. Yeah. What? I, uh, I can't pay in cash. We pay off in government paper. Government paper? Redeemable with interest 30 days after delivery, upon presentation in Washington. That won't do us any good here. Nobody to redeem it, no cash in town. Unless the banks. I'm afraid the banks won't cash them either, uh, right now. Them merchants in town? They won't take it for cash? Uh, no. How are we gonna pay Mrs. Cardwell grazing fee? Yeah. Wait a minute. You, you wait here. Just one minute. If, if you could take this government paper instead of the cash, I'll redeem it as soon as I can. And you could take just a little bit more for security and let me have enough cash so I can pay them in. I'd take it as a great kindness. How do I know I'd get one like that? I give my word. As soon as I get money from back east, I'll send you yours and you can send the paper. How do I know it's any good? It's issued by the government. They don't comfort me. I want value received when I give cash. All right, I've, I've, I've got some stock cattle, cows and cows, about 200 hit. You can use them to start your own herd on this grass. I'll sell them the cash I need. No, no cattle, no government paper. I want cash. Sorry for you. I've known women before who lost their son and husband. It didn't warp them, make them inhuman like you. Now you're not hurt just me and my men, like that boy in there. You're depriving your own neighbors, people who ought to be your friend. But you don't care about them, do you? You don't care about anything except your own personal little hate. I'm sorry for you. Ms. Godwell? Better be moving along. Oh, you stay put. Well, thank you for taking care of me. Look, I wouldn't worry too much about what Mr. Favor said. He gets a little riled up sometimes. Not that he hasn't got reason to this time. You know, we're, we're really stranded here with no money, no job, no way to go, nothing. Well, you could say, here, work for me. I need a hand. Well, I, I couldn't do that, not knowing my friend is still in trouble. How about your boy? Why don't you tell me about him? What was he like and all? 
Oh, he was uh, just an ordinary boy, I guess. Just like any other. Oh, he didn't seem ordinary to me. Yeah, I've never seen that way to a mother. I was the apple of my mother's eye, even when I was in trouble. And that was often. She'd spot a fit when I went off to work cattle. He always wanted me to be a preacher, a lawyer, or something like that. Yeah, he wanted to be a cowboy, too. That's one of the reasons. Yeah, but he didn't leave. Well, I didn't let him. And then he, he started dressing like that. Hanging around pens and the cattlemen, waiting for the herds to come in, drinking with the men, wearing a gun. It was bound to happen sooner or later. A fight. He didn't know what he was doing. Ma'am, you, you see, when men get to the end of a rail drive, they like to live some. A lot of long, hard months up there, wind and rain and cold and dust, rivers flooding, sometimes men dying. Well, there ain't no mother out there to comfort a man, to, no woman to ease loneliness. So when a man gets to town, he likes to. You know, live a little. But uh, it, it isn't usually the cattlemen who do the shooting and killing. It's usually men just hanging around town, have nothing else to do but cause trouble. A lot of them boys trying to prove them. It. Well, fighting's the only way they got to doing it. You're saying it's my fault. No, I'm not saying it. I'm just saying that maybe it isn't the fault of your boys or, or the man who killed them. You see, I know how your boy felt. But I'd been in the army and everything, and my mom had to let me go. Well, I'd better be moving along now. No, you... I want to thank you for your kindness, though. I'm not kind. I'm not kind at all. <laughs> hey, look, here comes Roddy with Mrs. Carter. How are you feeling, Roddy? Oh, a little rocky, but I'll be all right. Mr. Favor, you told me you had some stock cattle, about 200 head. About that? Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to look over, and uh, if they're in good condition, I might be willing to pay $30 a head, not a penny more, uh, cash. Well, yeah, I guess if it's all right with Mr. Draper here. Well, I just want the beef, not the stock cattle. All right. It's fine. Just fine. I, uh, I brought this, uh, so that you could pay your men. We can settle the exact amount later. I don't know how to thank oh, you, man. Never mind that. I'm sorry you about You had a right to be angry, Mr. Favor. Ah, that smells good. That's Wishbone's cooking. Well, I'd be proud if you'd stop and have a bite with us, man. Well, I, I like that, sir. Sure. Mr. Favor, when when do we go down? When you put these cattle delivered in the looking pens at the rail yard, you're practically stepping up the bar. <laughs> hey, Roddy, uh, how'd you do it? Oh, well, I didn't. She did it all on her own. 
I just help keep her on the right track, like I used to do my ma. <laughs>